It's a new year, it's a new version of a, well, an old show. <laughs> Josiah has returned, he's no longer telling you about the reality of the Wednesday Night Wrestling Remix. What he's doing is he's laying out his version of Alpha Entertainment Worldwide Raw. And I will tell you about my Alpha Entertainment Worldwide Smackdown. Uh, obviously he'll go first because Raw is on on Mondays. And then I'll go up and uh, we'll take turns going back and forth. And you guys will catch the pattern really quickly. Exactly. It's not hard. <laughs> so, um, the first Raw of the uh, post-AEW brand split is on 318 of 2002. Josiah, how do you see your world unfolding? Well, first episode of Raw, first show, obviously got all the pyro. They are saying, welcome to a new era. Welcome to Monday Night Raw. Presented by Alpha Entertainment Worldwide by God. <laughs> Cowboy hats, Boomer Sooner, you, you know the thing. And the first person coming out is obviously my number one pick, Kurt, Kurt Angle. Oh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. And of course, you, you, you can imagine Kurt Angle coming out bragging about being number one. I, I, I probably don't even need to say anything and you already got an image in your head. You got Kurt's ish eating grin. You got him saying, I'm an Olympic gold medalist, one with a broken freaking neck. Of course I'm number one the best and I'm gonna win every single championship on this show and then I'm gonna win the world championship so this is when we cut so this is uh this will be the moment right here where we're gonna be focusing on establishing stars so the first uh first person is gonna come out and and question Kurt Angle's legitimacy as as the uh as the um number one pick is going to be my U.S. champion, the first champion I drafted, Mr. Rob Van Dam. Well, and here's the, uh, here's one thing that instantly popped into my mind when you talk about uh, Kurt laying claim to titles is what title is going to look better with Kurt Angle than the red, white, and blue strap yeah, exactly. uh, that RBD is holding. So yeah. I, I like it. That's, like that's good booking. Like mine's. Yep. So Van Dam's coming out. He's like, listen, dude. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> ah, the, the, the duo Rob Van Dam poem, I went and wa actually watched some of his old promos, and it literally just boils down to that. So, I, there's going to be a mix of that and a mix of ECW cocky Rob, because, I mean, he, he's great. So, but yeah, basically Rob's like, listen, I'm actually coming in here with a championship. You're, you're, I understand you were drafted first, but... As far as I'm concerned, man, you're lower rung, man. I'm top of the heap here on Monday Night Raw. Because the top champion is the U.S. champion, and the U.S. champion is Rob Van Dam. Of course, Rob, over his hell, crowd losing their mind. Absolutely. Kurt, Kurt getting booed. <clears throat> yeah, he was the uh, the undisputed top guy in the real life yeah. of the invasion side. He was the only, the only one that got over. Yeah. Like, that wasn't already in WWF. Yep. Technically. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's just, the, the guy did great work. Yep. So, yeah, of course, those two are facing off, and then this is where the, the unexpected part comes in, because then you got, because I'm pretty sure you saw that opera music. Christian! Christian! Oh. It was, uh, at last, you're on your own. Is at the, last, you're on your own. I couldn't yes. remember what the words were. Yeah, that, that, was the next, that was the next line in the song. Thank you, thank yep. you. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't remember it, but that theme song is a bop. That, so, of course, Christian comes out, and everyone has this confused look on his face, because it, it's Christian. Yeah, Last time we saw him, he was flopping around on the mat, like, <laughs> losing. Yes. So, so, everyone's confused. It's like, and then, so, of course, it, it's Kurt Angle and Rob, so, of course, they're taking pot shots at him. Like, look at this guy. Aw, cute little fellow. What you doing here? <laughs> and, of course, Christian's like, okay, okay, take your shots, take your shots. I get it. I, last time you saw me, I, I I lost at WrestleMania. I was flopping around on the floor, but I talked to Mick Foley, and I told him I'm done. I I I need to make a change. I need to find my place 
here on Alpha Entertainment Worldwide. It's a new company, it's a new me, and I'm going to prove to everyone that Mick Foley did not waste his number five pick on me. And it's like, oh, that's that's great, kid. And then Kurt pushes them to the side. That's a said, condescending <laughs> attitude. <laughs> Kurt pushes them to the side and just looks at Rob and said, I'll tell you what, Rob, since you're the top champion and since you got the best looking belt that would go with me, I'm telling you right here, right now, we're going to have a match for the United States title. And, of course, Rob, overconfident as hell because he's Rob Van Dam. He's like, you know what? Bring it on. And Christian, of course, pushes his way back in and says, no. No, no, no. You're not going to ignore me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's up? Oh, I just had a quick question. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, one was Kurt, two was uh, Rob, Yep. and five was Christian. Was it was it Jazz and the Dudleys in between? Yes, sir. Okay, so these are actually your three top, top singles. These are, these are my top singles. That's great. Oh, just checking. I, I, I was making sure I remembered yep, that. Yeah, because this is, this is literally present, future, and other future, technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in 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 defense of uh, so if Kurt is the present, mm -hmm. Rob Van Dam I feel like is the made man from another yeah place, exactly. and Christian is the guy who's trying to get to that same level exactly. they're on. Exactly. So Christian's trying to take a step up, because especially at this point in Christian's career, even in your universe, he was just tag guy. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. like, and let's be honest, even back then, and even in your universe, it was very obvious Edge was going to be the superstar. Christian's just his brother. <laughs> <laughs> so but I've always really liked Christian oh I love the man like I at no point in time I thought damn Christian does bad work like it's never crossed my mind yeah so, there was a there was a period right before he left for TNA where I thought he could really be world champion and then he went to NWA TNA and became world, world champion, champion. <laughs> so I was like alright he met him I'm like about time yes <laughs> good stuff and actually had a nice reign did a lot of great stuff with that title and proved that oh he actually deserved that spot uh, I don't know what your feelings are, but I love the Domed Globe Championship, the belt that mm, he beat yeah. Jeff Jarrett for. Exactly. Uh, I just think that it's classy. Yeah, it, feel, uh, it feels prestigious absolutely. when you look at it, right? It's, it's funny because it was replaced by the big gold belt, which, once again, is classy, prestigious, you know, wonderful, great design. Good looking belt. Would tr uh, trade it for a good looking belt. It's, so it's, it's the only way to go. <laughs> only way to go. Uh we wish we could have told modern WWE that. I mean, we, we can. Yeah. Uh, Paul or Vince or whoever's in charge of getting some nice looking straps, we can we can update some stuff and get it looking good. I know that you know people who know what they're doing because uh, the UK titles all looked nice. Oh, they all looked incredible, which has made me question, why didn't you make your world titles look this good? Exactly. Mystery of life. And they still had the W big W logo in the middle, and it still looked good. Why didn't you do that? Yep. But I digress, as the legendary Taz would say. Your, your SmackDown wrestling tag. Um, but, um, so yeah. These three have a uh, triple threat U.S. title match. Mick Foley comes out. Have a nice day. Make it happen. And the that, that's the beauty of having a baby face, a laid back baby face. Um, GM. G uh, well, yeah, GM, exactly. I was going to say authority figure. Oh, is, okay, that works, yeah. Uh, but yeah, whatever title he has, whether he's the commissioner, the GM, the whatever, whatever, is that he. Or she, in my case, mm. can do what needs to be done, but not interfere with the goings on of the wrestling. Yeah, because as you know, you pretty much had nothing to do with the story. They pretty much set the match up on your own and make just yeah, I as like the authority <laughs> to say, okay, do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, but um, so these these three have a thirty minute banger because they had a bad wrestler in this match. Mm -hmm. Kurt Angles, Kurt and Rob pretty much kicked Christian out of the ring. Uh, right, yeah, continuing, to, to start off, continuing the storyline of them thinking he doesn't belong. Yeah, he's lesser than, he doesn't belong in the ring with them. And then Kurt and, um, Kurt and Rob, it's a clash of styles, obviously. Yes. So, Kurt's trying to wrestle Rob to the mat. Rob's trying to use his uh, quickness to avoid Kurt's strikes. And it's it, it's pretty much going back and forth. Um, and then Rob uh, goes, for a, goes for the five-star... On angle misses, and Kurt tries to roll him up for the three, and Christian breaks it up. And Kurt looks at, like, like I want you to imagine, like, I'm trying to think of a good Kurt Angle moment to really capture this look, but like, ah, uh, there was just one. Okay, think think of any time Kurt Angle's been surprised, rolled up, and his face because it's happened a few times. Sure. And, and just put put that face in your head. That's the one he has. Like, you. Mother effer, I cannot believe you did this to me. I'm going to absolutely kill you. Like, that that type of Kurt Angle. Okay. Face. 
And then Kurt proceeds to hit, try to hit Christian with the angle slam. And because I'm pretty sure Christian's finisher back then was like a reverse DDT, so this is like his debut of the kill switch. Nice, nice. Yep. So he reverses out of the angle, angle slam, lands on his feet, captures the arm, rolls into the kill switch, and drops Kurt. And the crowd loses it because they've never seen that move before. Yep, and it's a beautiful move. And it's a gorgeous move. And then Christian labors to get Kurt over because he's still like cruiserweight size at this time. Right. And then are we strapping up Christian? Is that what's happening? Oh, wait, wait for it. Okay. And then rolls him up. Christian covers angle, and then one, two, five star frog splash. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. And then Van Dam looks at Christian, looks at angle, and thinks it's a lot funnier to pin Kurt. So he pins. So he Kurt. pushes Christian off of Kurt, pins Kurt. I like that. Yep. It is funnier. Yep. I agree. So to recap, Christian looks like he would have won. Because he, yeah, yeah. Because he had it like won. It, yeah, yeah. With this incredible new finisher that no one's ever seen before. Yes. Uh, Kurt loses. Yes. But he's Kurt Angle, so. Oh, exactly. And then Van Dam retains. So Van Dam looks great. Christian looks great. Angle looks great. Crowd has a 30 minute classic and is on their feet, losing their mind. You're making Bucket look sound so easy, man, buddy. It, it really is. It's, really a big, is. it's a big main event right there. Man, big pop. All right. And then I'll just uh, run through the rest of the high points of this show so Alex can get on to his SmackDown. Yeah, but it, that was the that was a really important uh, yeah. thing. I wanted to open with a bang. Yeah. You, so that is the main event, right? Or is that the first match? No, that's the first match. Oh, so that's, oh the first, that's the first match Alpha Entertainment Worldwide okay. is that. I ain't mad at that a bit. So I thought you opened with the promo and then promoted it all night no, 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 to, no, no, no. to be the main event. Okay, sweet. Okay, I'm with you. Yep. Continue. Yep, because it's the... Yeah, first, you're you're setting first the time. match of a yes. new company. I exactly. wanted to really set with this company. I, I get about. it. I get it. I get it. Especially since you couldn't do it, and this is your company. Exactly. Set, but I, like I wanted <laughs> I wanted to give you something. Huh? I appreciate that. Um, so next one, the quick promo from our world champion Triple H. In, in house or out of the house? Oh, definitely out of the house. Okay. He's, he's, he's on a plane with Flair right now. <laughs> there you go. So here I am, your AEW world champion. Uh, I got Ric Flair. Uh, Woo! <laughs> He's, oh, he got two women on his arm, yeah, too. Two, two one on, on each, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Triple H isn't that stupid because I'm pretty sure he's married to Stephanie right he is, now. He is, but that, that's why Flair's doing yeah, whatever yeah, he wants. Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's looking for wife number five and six right now. <laughs> oh, today. my Lord. <laughs> but um, Triple H is basically like, listen, I would be there tonight, uh, but I decided, uh, yes, this is that area, Triple H. And I, I, I run through it, but basically the, the long and short of it is, Triple H decided to take some well-deserved time off as your world champion. Um, he believes that no one deserves a world title shot, especially with this company being so new. No one's established. They need to prove themselves. They need to prove themselves to Triple H. Well, and, and, and here's what's funny about this. So when Hunter came back in January, mm -hmm. he was a hot babyface because he was injured. Mm -hmm. And then when he defeated Jericho at in the opening match of Mania, yep. he was a hot babyface. Mm -hmm. But I love that you're... Dear demonstrate and like he's not done anything heelish, but he's he's just telling everybody wink wink. Yeah, nudge, nudge. yeah it's like this is where we're like going. people we're, don't deserve to see are, me. We are going back to the the tried and true, uh, you know, stuck up Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yeah, yeah. Triple H. The, like it. the what is it? The British Blue Blood. The oh Greenwich Blue Greenwich. Blood. Yes, Greenwich. Greenwich Greenwich Connecticut Greenwich Connecticut. But uh, yes, yeah, so. Triple H kind of turned heel without turning heel, but uh, yeah, but that's what's fun about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and I and, and I and I enjoyed that. So the crowd's like, yeah, because Triple H is on the screen. They're like, boo! What do you mean we're not gonna see you for two months? <laughs> so uh, that kind of covers where our world champion will be while we're establishing our. And world. you said he was on a, a jet, right? Yeah, jet. Oh man, next week he needs to be in a limousine. <laughs> Jet flying, limousine yeah. riding. Limousine uh, riding. Uh, <laughs> the following week, he can show up on SmackDown and be a kiss stealing with the GM. Wheel, wheel and dealing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the, then the fourth fourth time we see him, he's in a casino wheeling and dealing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Listen, we're going to have fun with yeah, this. Yeah, all my so. But, um, so that's Triple H's appearance. Um, obviously, covered, covers where it will be. I'm legitimately putting him on the show just to kiss Stephanie. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with him. <laughs> I, think, I think it's great. Yeah. Um... What I just said. Okay, and then after that, uh, we'll have um, the Dudleys uh, like promo package. So like everyone knows the Dudleys, everybody knows what they're about. But they're a tag team champions. They have a big promo package. They got a big tag team world tag team title match in the main event tonight. Oh, nice! To really establish like, oh yeah, tag team wrestling is going to matter here. Um, and then uh, we'll have Goldust. Who who, who who do you have them defending against? 
Uh, all the match. Oh, in the main them. event? That's awesome. Yeah, because I only have them for five minutes. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get that in because I think well, and that's who the Dudleys defeated at Mania. Well, one of the two teams, so they right. defeated the Hardys, who I have, yeah. and the Outsiders, who you have. So that's why that's, that's the main event. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure Hall's gone in a month, and Nash tears his quad in a month. Yeah. So, and by the rules, I cannot. Oh yeah, unbro- I forgot. I forgot to do that. I forgot to do it. <laughs> there are five rules of this show. Uh, we can't bring someone in before they are hired, but we can introduce them later. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't uh, keep someone after they've left, but we can stop using them sooner. We can't change the sh- show date or location, but we can change its name. Uh, four is we can't unbook injuries or deaths. I mean, that's awkward, but it's, it just feels it, it the, right, the right thing to do. And number five is wrestling's weird, so let's have fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, those are the rules of the game. Yep, just in case you forgot. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, so next up we got uh, my hardcore champion, Gold Dust, coming out. And uh, before this happens, like, uh, so we have, you know, the classic wrestler walking to the ring to get ready for their entrance. And Gold Dust just walks past Angle, who's dejected and furious, and he just, like, <laughs> pats him on the back and says, it's okay, little guy, you... You're still you're still number one in my eyes, <laughs> in my heart, <laughs> in my heart. And then Goldust comes out. Of course, everyone loves Goldust, so Goldust huge reaction. And Goldust is like, I am the hardcore champion, meaning right here, right now, for you good people of. I don't remember where the show emanated from, but uh, cheap pop, cheap pop, cheap pop number one and two. And then he's like, so I will defend this hardcore title against anyone for you people right here, right now. And out comes the last drafted superstar, Al Snow. Al Snow, I like that. Okay. <laughs> and Al Snow, of course, ECW roots. He's like, I'm gonna give you the head tonight. And then, cause that, that's some piece that together as you will. But yes, like, yes, it, yes. But uh, well, the fun thing is that Dustin Rhodes has really great facials. Yeah. He's like, oh. and so uh, and so he can sell it, and Al can be like, e- you know what I mean? You, you know, know what I mean? Every, every, Everybody wants. Yeah, no, Listen, everybody wants. Goldust yeah. is already an erogenous character, so exactly. it, it, it works. Yeah, no, it, I I think it makes sense. Yeah, um, it's not necessarily crossing a line, yep. but it's just skirting on the line, exactly. having fun with it. And and these two have a nice, fun 10, 15 minute hardcore match. Goldust wins with shattered dreams because he can do that in hardcore. That's matches. what I was gonna say. That's the beauty of the hardcore division yeah. is that he can he can do something you usually can't. Exactly, which makes it great. But uh, it's a great match. Crowd had fun, had a laugh or two. Uh, There's a couple goofy spots with head because uh, I'm gonna have Al Snow walking around with head again because yeah, that was my favorite Al Snow gimmick. Yes. So why wouldn't I do that? Um, and then uh, second to last but not least, um, I have Jazz just in a quick promo package, and this is important to me because of what women's wrestling was when Jazz was champion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have Jazz on the screen, and just in the background is the like cut shots of like the bra and panty matches, the mud wrestling matches, the uh, what, any other humiliating what, matches. What, what, what they call those gallon. things like uh, uh, Santa's little helper? Yeah, yeah Santa's little helper pillow fight. <laughs> all that, all that junk. Yep. And then she she says we're done with that crap. She doesn't say crap, but of course we're done with that. Yeah, crap. yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah, we're we're out of that era, yeah. if you will. Like this isn't this isn't pervy old man era anymore. Mick Foley told me I have the reins to make the women's wrestling great, and you know what? I'm gonna take him up on that. I'm gonna be the greatest women's champion that this company has ever seen. No, scratch that. I'm gonna be the greatest women's champion, period. And I'm gonna make women's wrestling the most important thing you see here on Monday Night Raw. This is my mission statement to you, and this will be known as the mission statement promo. Absolutely. And then she'll, like, call out all of Raw's women's division. So we're looking, just as a recap so everyone knows, uh, we're looking at Trish, Lita, Jacqueline, Ivory, Molly, uh, Stacy, and that's it. So, because there's not that many women's wrestlers. But, um, but it just as a, as a recap, Recap and refresher. Mm-hmm. Two thousand and two was a big year of debuts. Mm-hmm. So on both shows, we'll get we'll get the the we'll, influx we'll get, of talent when yeah. when uh when it when appropriate. Exactly. But as it stands, 
That's what it is. Yes. But um, Jazz caps off by saying, Molly Holly, congratulations. You worked very hard pushing through all that crap. So you will be my first challenger in the main event abroad next week. Main event abroad next week? That's awesome. Yep. Because that's something Nick Foley would do. Absolutely. Yep. So it makes perfect sense. Jazz and Molly are awesome. So they'll have the main event of next week's show. I'm feeling it inadequate. Announced. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Um, and then lastly, the show closes with Dudley's uh, defeating the Outsiders. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking all has to take the 3D, right? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, Nash, Matt, Nash, if he gets lifted up but for the 3D. I'm not, not going to lie. Nash gets lifted up. I feel like his, well, both, his, both his quads are going out. Gone. In, in, You're right. In that moment. Yeah. But it's, it's a fun match. There's a there's a little tease because uh, um, Nash is the jackknife on uh, D- Devon. Okay. But uh, Bubba breaks it up at the last second. Huge moment. Yeah. Crowd goes wild. Um, and then, uh, Dudley Duff drop, of course, for the three. So, right. Great, great stuff all around. Uh, crowd goes home happy. Dudley's retained. All the champions were on the show. My, nope. All the champions are on the yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, here's, here's my thing. So, Jazz has ties back to ECW. Yep. The Dudleys have ties, ties back, back to ECW. ECW. <laughs> uh, Robert Rob, Nam, obviously, obviously, was like <laughs> the, the prime guy he was for the a while. ECW exactly. guy. The only one that doesn't who's the champion is Goldust, but right. I but he, feel he like got, he would have fit in ECW. Well, I was going to say he got challenged by an ECW original, exactly. so he got a very ECW heavy first Monday Night Raw. Which if, is, if you guys can't great. tell, I'm a huge ECW fan, and also technically, Mick, Mick Foley, Foley I was is say, an Mick ECW. Foley was an ECW fan as well. So. Yeah, so it all it all makes sense. Yes, everything uh, flows quite well together. All right, tag up. Thank you. On uh, March 21st of 2002, SmackDown begins with, uh, it, it begins with, uh, unfortunately, a talking segment because it's very 2002. It's very WWE, or what was WWE, what is now Alpha Entertainment Worldwide. Right. But when you have a roster with The Rock and Hulk Hogan, you're kind of going to start with promos. Yep. So, you know, uh, we, uh, we, you know, we hear Hogan's classic theme song. He comes out, he poses, we kill way too much time. But while the music's still playing, and then exactly Josiah's uh, doing the gimmick, mm. he gets interrupted by The Rock. Uh, Wait. He, because they they main, main evented... That classic WrestleMania. The actual WrestleMania, instead of being third from the top, because... or They, they main evented they were, our they WrestleMania. Were, they were third from the top yeah, in real life. In real yeah. life, they were third from the top. But here, they main evented... And that's legitimately why Stephanie picked both of them because she wanted the the opportunity to give oh, that fans on exactly give that to fans on SmackDown. Um, so both these guys are are now baby faces. I mean, they were pretty much that 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 was the case as of the real show and you know our version of it. Yep. But here in this segment where Rock interrupts Hogan posing. He, he puts over Hogan. He says, oh, you know, we stole the show. But, you know, there was nobody else that could. Um, but they, they're they not just putting each other over. They end up introducing and putting over Edge, the Intercontinental Champion. Hmm. Um, because, in reality, Rocky's not long for this world. And Hogan's never going to be a guy that has longevity. Because even... 20 years, 21 20, years ago. Oh my God, this is 21 years ago. He was already old. And so you have to use the star power of these folks to help establish the way things are going. Exactly. So, um, 2002 Edge is not... 2018 Edge. Well, I was going to say peak Edge is all I was going to yeah. say. But 2002 Edge is still uh, good enough to, to feel... Important. Important and uh, as though that he will be the, the, the flag bearer after these two men. Right. But these three guys are interrupted by the number 10 overall pick for SmackDown, and that being William Regal. Sickety snap. And so he puts over himself how that he is better than all three of these, uh, these childish men. How that... Uh, Two of them are only about catchphrases, and and Edge just is a, a, a he's jokester. A pup. Exactly, he's a pup. Um, and so Edge is not willing to put up with being diminished by Regal, and says 
If you uh, want to prove that you're better than me, do it tonight in the main event. And Regal says, only for that Intercontinental Championship. Edge being... Settlement villain back at it again. <laughs> yes, exactly. And Edge being a dumb babyface agrees because... Let's do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's he's uh, not exactly got his best interest in heart or, or in mind. He r- runs forward straight at it with his heart. Head and first his into head. brick wall. <laughs> well, or brass knucks, if you will. Ah, the power of the punch. Um, so the um, that opening promo sets up the main event. But the other big event that goes down tonight on SmackDown is... So I'm actually inversing your, your booking mm-hmm. unintentionally because I didn't know what your booking was. Yeah, yeah, you're good. So my IC title was set up in the first promo but is the main event. But our Cruiserweight Tag Team titles are the opening contest of SmackDown. Yeah, where the Cruiserweight Tag Team champions of Crash Holly and Spike Dudley defend against the reunited... Uh, X Factor, which is X Pac and Just Incredible, two great athletes. Oh, absolutely! And uh, they are—is it called second to, to the ring when there are three guys? I don't know. They're a company they're, they're to the 30. ring. They're, they're, <laughs> they're thirded, yes. But they're well, technically well, it was called seconded when the Young Bucks came out with Kenny. So I would say okay, yes. okay, okay. Good, thanks. I just wasn't sure. But they're accompanied to the ring by the giant A Train, Albert. Ah, the hip hop hippo. Hip hop hippo. Yeah, he's. <laughs> he's he's had a lot of gimmicks. Lord Tenzai later on, and Sweet Tea as well. Uh, Giant Bernard, uh, Matt Bloom comes to the ring with him. <laughs> um, so the match itself runs uh, just above twenty minutes. Cool. Spike, who is great at fighting from underneath, he phenomenal. That, yeah. Um, he takes the, the 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 brunt of the offense. Well, the defense really. Uh-huh. He's uh, like anytime. X Pac and Justin can they they cheat and cut off the ring and they they have him on their side. Uh, classic tag team wrestling. That's real. That's a real Cornette classic. <laughs> exactly. Um, and and uh, as anybody who's ever seen Crash Holly knows, he is a big personality. Mm-hmm. And so he's over in that corner begging for the tag all the time. Finally, Spike gets that hot tag. Uh, yeah, people love it. Uh, uh, Crash, he's he's smart enough that he knows that it's been three on one basically with Spike over that corner. Mm-hmm. So his first thing is he he ducks an attack from X Pac. He drop kicks Justin off of the okay um, yeah. like his feet on the ring. Yeah, mean, he yeah. like uh, baseball yeah, it bounces slides. off the. Uh, and so now yeah. it's uh, Crash versus X Pac straight up. Just these two while I, mean, I would have killed one while 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 Spike recovers on the outside and yeah. Albert A Train whatever Matt Bloom is checking Mike, on get up get up <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And so, um, uh, so Crash is is uh, hitting uh, a big bump in feet where he yeah. he knocks down Xbox, he comes up, he scoops him down again, exactly. But um, Spike, who is a glutton for punishment, begs for the tag. He's like, "Give it!" And Crash, he's like, "All right, screw he it. it." He gives yeah. it to him, and we uh, we hit the uh, the Dudley dog where Spike runs up the yep. uh, the, I the, the turnbuckle. Dog. And, and then, then kicks his leg exactly, and, and so um, and so X Pac loses in the opening contest to Spike Dudley one two three. Uh, at this point, Justin and Albert, I mean because he's still Albert, um, right, right, both try to attack Spike and Crash, but they run off. I'm about to say, and they're, so they're the, not stupid. They, exactly, yeah, they're smart baby faces, and so the uh, the heels uh, are left in the ring, kind of looking foolish while the faces are running off. But what, what I'm doing with this is establishing that not only are the tag teams good or important, mm-hmm. but that... Um, so I never got rid of the WCW Cruiserweight weight limit, which was 225 and below. Yeah. And so that's how I can justify just incredible X-Pac Pretty much anybody that I want, because I can lie. Also, <laughs> yeah, they they really uh, worked hard to cut this weight. They're they are professional wrestlers, exactly, even better than regular wrestlers. Kind of <laughs> I like that. And so, um, with that, that's that's how that uh, I like I, said, I I keep that division strong. Cool. Um. Um. <laughs> I did not book the entire show like Josiah did. That's why I said I felt inadequate when he was doing it. But what I did do was I booked the main event where Edge goes, actually, let me say 25 and 25, so you put that together, that's 50 minutes. Yep. So 
after you take out commercials, we've got what? 25 minutes left to get. Give so two. in the in the middle, we got some good stuff, but you know a little bit. In the middle, some here. stuff some stuff happened. Some but. stuff in the middle, yeah. <laughs> but the important thing in the main event, Edge looks like he's going to win at the um, at that 24 minute mark. He's uh, he's got William Regal down in the the middle of the ring. He's in the corner. He's he's like ready to go. Uh, is this finisher the spirit baton? Well, he's definitely going to go. Uh, gonna he's going to go it. for a spirit. Okay, exactly. And so um, he's just sitting there bouncing like you think you know him. You think you know him. <laughs> and so um, as Regal begins to get up, we have um, the the guy that I've long called throughout this series, the Extreme Technician. Mm. Um, My man. Um, pop up and, or not up, 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 but come out to the uh, uh, ringside area and converse with the referee so that he doesn't see that when Regal gets up, he's wearing the brass knuckles. And when they Edge runs at him, punch. he powers the punch. Uh, uh, immediately upon Edge going down and Regal placing the brass knuckles back in his trunks, um, Lance Storm gets off the apron and Regal gets the one, two, three, and they walk off, closing out the show together because um, I, love I, I, love I basically this. treat Lance Storm as William Regal's apprentice Ooh. Um, throughout the duration because they are two very uh, befitting uh, characters. Bedlows. Yeah. Yes. Good and stuff. so uh, that is the first iteration of, actually, I probably should have put in that middle segment mm. something to do with Stephanie and. Um, a teaser for the fact that Triple H would be there. So we'll, we'll say that those two events occurred. Yeah. Um, with next, next week, Triple H will be on the show. Exactly. That way I can do the kiss stealing gimmick where he walks by and give, yeah. uh, just gives her a little peck to, yeah. to establish, hey, here's what's up. Like, hey, he was on the show. Exactly. <laughs> I was here. Um, but yeah, so that means uh, with the conclusion of my first SmackDown, we are back to Josiah's Monday Night Raw. Uh, let's see, what are we on? Uh, it's uh, the 25th. Yes, sir. Cool, cool. All right. Um, so, like I said, Jazz and uh, Molly Holly will be my main event tonight. Um, to open the show, uh, I have Chris Jericho coming out, former world champion. Uh, comes out, pretty much makes just quick work because Sean Stasiak. Cause, uh, oh, that's smart. Yeah. It's a good way to use, uh, well, that piece of meat. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Um, so, big one for Jericho. Um, and then, uh, all th and this is all throughout the night, so... Uh, first, like, promo packages, just, uh, packages of Paul Heyman sitting there, big grin on his face, because he's, uh, he's got a surprise, he's got a big surprise for next week's Raw, a big moment, the, the number, number nine pick, the, uh, NCAA world champion, top level wrestling athlete, his, his beast, before it was called the beast, his next big thing, will be on, uh, Monday Night Raw, and he will be showing everyone why he was rated so highly by Mick Foley himself. And throughout these um, these vignettes go on pretty much the whole night, and the uh, after the last one, Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out to the ring and says, "So this this, this piece of crap's getting vignettes. Meanwhile, Stone Cold Steve Austin's not getting any TV time. What? Oh, uh -huh. yes, sir. That's all right." And then, of course, um, Al Snow, not knowing any better, the poor bastard is like, listen, Austin, at least at least you got picked. I was the last kid picked on the playground. And, of course, Austin's like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that, so I never, I never started what, so if you start what right now, yeah. that's funny. Yeah. Because Al Snow being the recipient of it. Yeah. Oh. He's like, I said, you got picked. And Austin's like, what? I said you got picked. What? I got picked last. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then he was supposed to be my friend. He was supposed to be my friend. You're my friend, man. You're well, I meant Nick. You know, yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick, Nick's him. supposed to be my best friend, and he didn't pick me, man. And, and of course, Al Snow's walking around with head. He's like, "Come on, guys!" <laughs> and he's walking back and forth, and then turns around to Austin, and of Austin course. Just stuns him. Oh, I love it. And then he picks up head and goes and stuns head just for just because, just for fun. And then. And then Austin leaves, but it, it's it just basically set up the point of Austin's upset. Yes. So just yeah. keep that, which is which is very true in real life. Yes. Keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, but Brock will debut next week. Austin's done. Al Snow, and then main event is Molly Holly 
versus uh, my woman's champion, Jazz. This is Jazz's first match on the show. Um, I want I want to give them about twenty five ish minutes because I, I they can both go absolutely. So uh, well, and what you're doing is you're establishing a new standard mm -hmm. for this entire division. So I think exactly. it's smart to start strong exactly in that way. And um, these and um, you don't they don't they're not out in the ring. It's a it's a, it's a quote unquote locker room sellout at the monitors. They're putting on a a technical classic. Well, and, oh, well, here's the cool thing. JR can sell that in his headset. He can say, what is that? What? Are you re really? Really? And JR's not, or not JR, uh, Jim Raw, uh, Jerry Lawler. There it is. So, so Jim will be confused, but Jerry's like, I want to see it. I want to see it. Yeah. And so, because we are yeah. going to be able to change Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah. Um, and so he's like, show me, show me. And so we can have a camera cut where all the women are watching on the monitor what is being done in the ring to, exactly. to fully lay out how important this is for all of them, not just the two in the ring. Exactly. exactly. So, yeah, you know, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so good stuff around. Locker room sellout in the back. Uh, Molly goes for the Molly go round, misses and jazz. Um, I wanted to give her something that really, like, I wanted to change her finisher, basically. Because uh, I don't remember what their finisher is. So can I can I give a suggestion? I don't know if you have this in mind. Oh, please. But so the Molly go round was Molly uh, flip uh, jumping off the top, flipping. hitting and, and flipping into a hurricane run up into a pin pinning uh, pinning combination. Pretty much. Um, but in my mind, if if Jazz, who is very strong, yes. can catch Molly and not do the rotation for the pin, but just Power bomb her Ooh, one, straight power bomb. pick her back up, power bomb her two, and pick her back up, power bomb her three, and then hold her down. I oh. think, um, uh, I think that I, I don't know if the fans will get behind her and do like uh, they do with uh, Drew McIntyre and go three, three two, one. two, one. But um, if they could in two thousand and two get behind Jazz so strong that that she does the triple power bomb as her finish, yeah, there's do. And, and 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 with her being a strong and defending champion, have obviously you would have to plant somebody in the crowd for the first time. Yeah. But plant somebody in the crowd for the first time, and then so she hits the first one, they go one. one. Then she hits the second one, they go two. two. She hits the third one, they go three. And you know you can even call it you know countdown to destruction Count, or countdown something to devastation, devas or whatever, something, yeah. cool so, something like that. Because you know that's what she is. She's she's an unstoppable force. Yeah, she's a dominant. She's She's basically China, but in the 2000s. Well, and you know, a little shorter, but and, uh, yeah, yeah, but but she's yeah, still yeah. stout. She's she, still stout. I'm about to say she's stacked. Though. Yeah, absolutely. She's, she's got muscles on her muscles. Yes. Um. And so, like, I don't know if that's what you had in mind, but that's what it's immediately what well, I envisioned. I, I was actually about to ask you for suggestions because I, oh. I was thinking of a like a gorilla press slam, but those never really look good. That's more of a transitional move. Well, and I think that this is just a great way to start it because yeah. it'll seem like it happened nat well, it'll seem it'll like it'll happen in the heat of the moment. Exactly. And then you just keep it going. Yeah. And like I said, if you plant some fans in there to start the count, oh, yes, please do that. Let's yeah. cheat. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so after the match, obviously they put on a banger, hell of a finish. The crowd was actually like standing ovation, I would hope. I, yeah, well, we well, can at least have Mick so, oh, here's what you do. So, before you get the, to the finished spot, we've yeah. already established the women we're watching. Yeah. The next time we cut back there, mix with them. Mix with them. And so, then what we'll do is we'll try and encourage the fans to do the standing ovation by having Mick and the ladies come out on the ramp and yeah. do the old ECW yeah. goodbye ah. spot. So, we're not saying goodbye to them, yeah. but every, not every time, but a lot of times when, when talents would leave ECW, they would have the, 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 the stage sellout where yeah. they would get, give the hugs and kisses goodbye to the folks. Yep. And so if Mick does that with all the ladies, I think it might help encourage the, the fans to play along. Got it. So yeah, I think that's a smart uh, smart play on that one. Appreciate it, appreciate it. But um, yeah, so uh, Jazz raises Molly's hand because Molly's incredible and yes. deserves her flowers. Love it. Um, But uh, yeah, she, she, she pats her on the back, says, I appreciate you, you're, you're awesome, and I hope to do this again with you sometime. And then Jazz raises her AEW Women's Championship. Which is very pretty. Very beautiful belt. I had that Oswald flash on the screen now. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. playing though, popping it up. Excellent. Uh, but speaking of champions, speaking of championships and uh, title defenses, last week, William Regal smarted his way into the IC title. Edge was not pleased with this, so he, he uh, think, uh, do you think you know me, comes out to the ring, mean? and he uh, he cuts himself a promo saying, hey, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm young, I'm a little impulsive, but you know what? I'm also 
young and ready to go. So William Regal, get out here. I want my rematch. You know, dun 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 dun. William Regal's Regal music plays, and he says, uh, "Youngin, youngin, <laughs> um, you you uh, might be young and impulsive, but me, I am uh, seasoned and I'm I'm smart. the The Intercontinental Championship it has a, a long lineage, indeed. Um, Indubitably, it's, it's, uh... <laughs> and so." Within that lineage of the championship, it has long been established that the champion must uh, must defend every 30 days. Mm. Well, uh, I don't know what your calendar looks like here in America, but for, for us in England, our calendar, uh, it, it, our 30 days, it doesn't come around once a week. That's a, that's a once a month type of thing, son. And so um, I will not be defending the Intercontinental Championship against you. Uh, so Lance Storm is by his side throughout this because he was there by uh, at ringside to help w Regal get the, the title on his uh, shoulder or around his waist, however it, it lies. Um, and so Regal uh, has outsmarted Edge. And so Lance, Lance Storm asks for the mic and, or, you know, reaches out for it. And he says, uh, he says, your lordship, um, I have brought, I've brought you someone else to, to, to learn under your tree. Mm. Um, he's a man who has high regard for the championship you hold, mm. and he has agreed to take out this, this refuge, this problem that we have, and uh, jumping edge from behind and setting up our next match is Mr. Perfect. Ah. And so tonight... In the opening contest of SmackDown, it is Mr. Perfect versus Edge because Edge can't get his title match that he wants. At, but Mr. Perfect does, like I said, hold high reverence for the Intercontinental Championship. And thus, he is aligned with Lance Storm and William Regal for the short period of time that I have him. Um, because, I mean, Mr. Perfect's awesome. I love Mr. Perfect. He did such great work with the Intercontinental title, and the fact is, like I said, with the, the idea that he won't be long for this world, mm -hmm. um, he he loses to uh, Edge in the opening contest. Gotcha. So as Edge is making his way up to the uh, up the ramp and back to the back, we, we have uh, random interviewer number three. I don't know not, who it is. Not, not number three. <laughs> So just the the the, the low string uh, person, whoever's working velocity that 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 way again. Um, they're they're in the back and they're with the general manager of SmackDown, Stephanie McMahon Helmsley, and she she's just excited about this this new uh, this new horizon that they're on with mm -hmm. Alpha Entertainment Worldwide. And she she announces the main event. Of this week's SmackDown, but before she can finish talking about it, she gets interrupted by X Factor. That being like Albert. Dealing with the X Factor. Well, I mean, so they're in the back, so the music's yeah. not playing. Oh, okay, yeah. But um, but X Pac walks up with Albert and Credible, and yep. and they're um, they're disrespectful, we'll say, what? to to Stephanie. Um, they they think that they had it. The, the, the titles in their grasp last mm -hmm. week and and she says well she says I, I believe in you three I, I think that all three of you have tremendous talent and that's why I've put you in the main event here tonight and so they're they're very pleased with this Albert and and Credible they high five and Xbox yeah. he's, he's smiling you know he's, he can see his pearly whites through the the, the black the black, thick black beard mm -hmm. um, and she says yeah uh yeah, I've 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 booked you. Actually, I booked you, uh, or I put you in, in the main event. I've I put you in there with with the world champion, actually. And and then they're, all their faces drop. There are no more high fives. There's no more smiles. They're all, what? She's like, yeah, um, yeah. My husband, uh, Triple H, has agreed to be in the main event tonight. His partners are the immortal Hulk Hogan, and now now their 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 their, 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 their sad faces turn to their jaws on the floor. And the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, The Rock. And 
and, and now they don't want this. They don't want none of this. This is so great because I could see Xbox reaction. <laughs> and so, uh, in the main event, we have... Uh, so, obviously, Josiah has laid the groundwork for Hunter hanging out with Ric Flair in, in the, the, the jet and in the uh, limousine this past week. Yep. This week, I'm going to have Triple H walk by his wife, steal a kiss on his way to the ring for the main event. Um, but Triple H hasn't done anything heelish yet. Yeah. He's just very happy with himself. He just, he knows that he's a cut above because he's, he's a top tier athlete in a world of lower tier athletes. Exactly. And so, so he, like I said, he hasn't done anything villainous. He's just very happy with himself. He, he's feeling himself a lot. <laughs> and he, so he, he knows he's great. And so, uh, just like Josiah was trying to sing some Uncle Cracker for us earlier, <laughs> um, we, we start the main event with, uh, with X Factor coming all coming out together, but then we spend the next fifteen. Well, it's gonna feel like fifteen minutes. Well, let's see. Hold up. You have a rock entrance, so it's just twenty minutes. You have a Hogan Hogan entrance, entrance, which is like fifty minutes, and, and then, then Triple, Triple H's H. entrance in two thousand, which two thousand two, yeah, two thousand two, yeah, which is ungodly long. So yeah. And so so the the main event match itself will be about twelve minutes. But the getting to the match is going to be about twelve minutes as well. Yeah. So twenty four minutes. Now, wait, twenty four minutes. <laughs> because because entrances plus match are like the whole <laughs> the whole last half of the show. Um, that was great. But yeah, so it goes like this. Like I said, X Factor comes out. Then we do the Rock because you know if you're not going on last, he wants to come out first. Yep. Hogan is sandwiched between. Uh, he's gonna. I'm surprised his ego can take that. <laughs> exactly. And and uh, so Trips does his spit and water thing. That everyone has a mimic, so it's okay. And so, uh, realistically, Albert is the only guy on the X Factor side who has the the size to take the beatdown that... Oh, so Albert gets his ass kicked all match. Got it. Well, no, no, no. What I mean is, anytime that uh, The Rock goes like... And hits hits Albert. He can take it. He doesn't. He doesn't bump for it. Whereas uh, X Pac and Credible can't will are, are flying around the ring. At right. Time. So the, the 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 two smaller gentlemen in X Factor are bumping all the over the. But every time they tag in Albert, he takes the the beating, but doesn't go down. Is the, the point? That's the story we're telling this whole match. So whether Hogan tries to big boot him, he'll he'll str- uh, uh, stagger, uh, hit hit the ropes, bounce back, but not go down. Um. So, in the climax of the match, uh, exact, uh, like I said, keep in mind, Albert is taking hits but not going down. Yep. In the climax of the match, X-Pac is an egomaniac and tags himself in uh, off the back of Albert. Yeah, gets yeah. in. He, um, he takes a rock bottom. Hogan begs for the tag. Rocky tags him in. He drops the leg on X-Pac. Uh, and Triple H says, all right, it's my turn. Hogan tags in uh, Hunter. Hunter picks up uh, his his best hey, bud, uh, Sean buddy. Waltman, pedigree, and uh, and so we we go home with uh, with the babyface side. It's the all world. about the game playing on the loudspeakers. Exactly. Um, so while uh, the Rock Hogan uh, Hunter team is posing, they get jumped from behind by Albert. Uh, X Pac and Credible, but only momentarily, yeah. just so that we can go home with uh, Rocky hitting his most electrifying move of, uh, on just Incredible. So he hits uh, the spine bust to the people's elbow. Uh, we roll credits and Rock finishes. Can you believe we're in the month of April, sir? Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Well, I mean, April of 2002, so yeah, yeah, yeah. not so really time, any. Time of flies backwards. <laughs> yeah, time <laughs> is flying backwards. I like that. <laughs> What do you have on your first roll of April, sir? <laughs> um, well, a uh, lot of lot of prepping for the pay per view. A lot of prepping for the pay per view. So the first two weeks, uh, we're basically establishing the company. Yes. Not not just our shows, but the company. So now we're uh, raw with the first pay per view of Alpha Entertainment Worldwide's history. We're going to be concentrating on what's next in this world, and that is the backlash. Exactly. <laughs> so we open up the show with the much teased, much um, hyped. Uh, debut of the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. And who do you have him in the ring with? 
Alice Oh my god, that's exactly what I had in my head. That's exactly what I had in my head. I love why it. I had Al come out last week. Oh, and I, I said in my head, too. <laughs> <laughs> what does everybody want? Hey. Oh, that's good stuff. But um, Al Snow comes out, he's feeling himself, he said, it's my time, it's my time. Brock beats him with an F5 in like five seconds. Yeah. And this is no knock on Al Snow, I love Al Snow to death, but you gotta put Brock over strong, especially well, this early. And the thing is that Al Snow even knows, like he's running OVW right now. Yeah. And he knows that you've got to focus on the, the future, future. And, and there's no bigger future than the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. Exactly. Whether it's... I mean, heck, part of it, he's still one of the top guys, and back then he was for sure being made the guy. Yeah, he was being groomed. Like, if he never left, like he, I feel like his world title reigns would have probably been the same, because like, they kind of smashed I, him. I have, I have this, I have this uh, vision in my head of John Cena never breaking past the mid-card if Brock Lesnar uh -huh. never left the company. That's huge. So... Same. The the first the first title defense that Brock had after he won his second world title mm -hmm. at Backlash uh, this is a year down the line but right, still right, right. Um, was against John Cena John Cena and, and, and yeah and John lost I mean this is rapper John St uh, also but I still I thought Thugonomics Thugonomics exactly but he lost decisively against Brock Lesnar because Brock Lesnar was such a dominant force so I, I have this thing in my mind like I don't think Batista could be stopped. And I don't think Randy Orton would be stopped, but I think John Cena may never have been John Cena if Brock Lesnar never left the company. Wow. Just personally speaking. I mean, who knows? We'll never know. Oh, exactly. We'll, we'll never know. And honestly, I wouldn't want that. But, because, yes, John John's had some moments where, okay, he probably shouldn't have won that match. But, I, I feel like it's good. Like, look, because I, I got into wrestling because of, well, Rey Mysterio and John Cena. Mm -hmm. or, those are my two guys. So I feel like without them, I don't know what kind of wrestling fan I'm For I sure. So, and, and this is just me growing up with them. So that's probably the bias there. But. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it. So, like, you could make the same argument for your feelings toward John Cena, how I felt about Sting growing up. Mm -hmm. So, um, he. Sting, yeah, uh, the icon could have done no wrong to, in in child my mind, like the my child mind. Yeah, yeah. Sting could do no wrong. Um, as an adult, I see he was kind of a dummy a lot. Oh, he was an idiot. <laughs> but but but, but oh. little little kid me didn't even realize. I was like, oh, you you make all the right calls there, Stinger. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to believe all your friends. It's fine. <laughs> even though they always stab you in the back every single time. <laughs> oh no. Uh, but um. But yeah, I love that booking, by yeah. the way. But yeah, so he he beats us. Oh, Snow, quick as a snap. Like, before before JR could even announce who he was, the match was over. <laughs> He's got all those accolades yep. to talk about. He can't even do it. Yeah. So the rest of the time is filled by Paul Heyman hyping this man up, calling him the next big thing, calling him my greatest find since Van Damme or something. Like, something, like, really, something that puts over Brock and Van Damme. Let, let me give you a little bit of uh, uh, the assist, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. So... Uh, as I said, leading into the existence of Alpha Entertainment Worldwide, Steve Austin didn't want to lose to Brock Lesnar because there was no storyline mm. behind the, the loss. Exactly. But Paul Heyman, working with Lance Storm, Mike Awesome, Big Keish, The Undertaker, Steve Austin, ah. and Rob Van Dam, with The Most Dangerous Alliance, and then immediately upon the disintegration of The Most Dangerous Alliance, getting himself aligned with I love the next big thing, but I would also love if we called him the most dangerous man. Ooh. The next big thing, Brock Lesnar. Because, A, he is a very dangerous man, and B, it's just a dig on his old crew. Yeah. And so, I would love for Paul to say, we had an extreme technician. This guy can out-wrestle him. Ooh. We had uh, the whole effing show. This guy's a bigger show. Now, maybe you can't say that because a big show's still in the company, but uh, oh, yeah, uh, that's right. yeah. uh, uh, this guy's going to take over the whole show. There we go. Well, that, 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 works. that works. Um, um, We had a bad, bad man. Well, there's nobody badder than this man right here. Basically, have I mean, Paul put Brock over bigger than everybody that was in his faction, but I would make one exception to that. I would not bring up the name Steve Austin mm -hmm. in the promo, but not because... Paul believes that Steve is bigger than Brock, but because Paul thinks Steve's not worth talking about. Uh. Like, you let me down, kid. I believed in you. 
I was in the ECW. Old, I, I was the first one. I him. called you. Yeah. When, yeah. So when Steve comes out and he what's up the crowd, I I'm, I can't book I can't book your side of the show. But no, in my, he was, in coming, my he was world, coming out. So yeah. In yeah. my world, when 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 Austin comes out and he what's up this crowd, Paul he he can say he can say to Steve he's like who was the first man to call you when Eric Bischoff FedExed you your your pink slip? It was me. But you let me down, Steve. He uh, he's like. You lost to The Undertaker at WrestleMania. You lost the world title to Chris Jericho. You couldn't keep the most dangerous alliance together. But it's okay. It's all right. I've got the most dangerous man. I've got the next big thing. I've got Brock Lesnar. There it is. <sighs> it's exciting. That's it's cool. like, oh, there's no story. Well, you yep. ain't got that excuse now, Steve. Yep. Oh, and uh, so I'm glad you said all that because I was going to have to make up that promo as, as we go. So you saved me some time. Oh, but, right. Um, yeah, there's literally nothing out. Like, Paul says his piece, and then says, Brock, let's go. And Steve Austin, for the first time in his career, doesn't stun anybody. He doesn't say anything. He just stands there and just, he's got this reflective look on his face. I like it. And and then, that's commercial. Yes. Um. The, the reason that's yeah. impactful is because he doesn't do it, that. Yeah, it's not his, that's not his thing. And it's so, it, it'll it'll help. Uh, put over Brock without hit Brock even having to touch him. I was about to say, he didn't have to touch him, didn't have to say anything, which is great, because I don't think no one knows what his voice sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the only thing, like, if you just listen to Brock Lesnar's voice without looking at me, like, I can take this guy in a fight. Mm-hmm. And then you see him, like, I cannot take I this cannot. guy in a fight. <laughs> oh, that, do you know, do you know that Mark Marrow, when he found out his wife was cheating, he's yeah. like, I'm going to take this guy out. He's like, I'm going to beat him up <laughs> so bad. He, and then he, then he sees Brock Lesnar, he's like, I just got some forgiveness. I just, I just, I just had this overwhelming. <laughs> the Lord. I just had this overwhelming desire oh, to forgive. Forgive, forgive, and forgive, man. Is it really that big a deal? I don't think it is. Nah, I, th- I think, I think, I think you made the right call there, Brock. I think Rita should be yours. <laughs> all you, man. All you, big guy. I'll find somebody. Else. Exactly. Thank God. I will be happy alone. Oh Lord, that was good stuff. But yeah, all that opens my show. <laughs> Jesus, so good. Oh man. Uh, next up, I love this show. By the way, oh yeah, this is a ball. I'm having a ball with this, man. If you can't, I, I think that's gonna be the longest show of the sh- channel's history. Oh, big time. <laughs> um, but um, next up we have uh, so that, that was the opening match. Uh, next up we have a, a backstage segment uh, announcing the first match for Backlash, which will be a number one contenders match for a future world woman a Alpha Entertainment Worldwide Women's Championship match. Okay. And the two competitors that were selected were Trish Stratus. Is Mick doing this promo? Yes. Okay. And Lita. Sorry, I really should have added that. No, it's okay. Here. It's okay. Just just assume if I'm talking that Mick's talking. Gotcha. Sounds good. Yep. But um and and Mick makes that announcement. Trish Trish and Lita come on and they talk about how how impressed they were with uh Jazz and with Molly's match and that they're gonna try and make that same magic, but then bring the focus back around because you got to give them genuine props of, like, people getting knowledge of greatness that was that match. But then also focus back on, but I'm going to be a greatest, I'm going to be the greatest women's champion. That's the only part of Chaz's speech I didn't agree with. That's the only part of the mission statement that isn't accurate. Right. Well, can I, can I make a suggestion? Please. Um, so how many Raws are there between now and Backlash? Uh, two. Uh, I would love, personally speaking, if uh, Molly Holly interrupts this segment with Mick, Trish and Lita and says, says straight to Mick, Mick, thank you for your opportunity to face Jazz for the title. Uh, Before these two women wrestle each other at Backlash, I I would love the privilege to wrestle each of them on the road to Backlash. That way that you, you can, you can, you can put over uh, uh, Trish and Lita on the way to the show and Molly can raise both their hands. She can, she can uh, show the love and we know that they can all three have great matches yeah, on the road, good. road too. Yeah, so we just have random great matches. Yeah, just for fun. yeah, and and the, that way that it keeps it. keeps everybody on the the show and things uh, uh progressing. Exactly. Well, what I said, um, I'll have her face Trish this week and Lita next week. Sounds good. Um, cool. And then uh, what was the last thing I wanted to book for the night? Oh, uh, so Rob comes out uh, has a hardcore title defense. Um, and Russell's, uh... You mean United States title? Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. It's okay. Good set. <laughs> um, and, um, he wrestles Hardcore Holly, that's why the mix Oh, that him. makes sense. Yep. Uh, but, uh, retains his U.S. title against Hardcore Holly. It was hard-hitting, but, you know, Rob 
Rob won, and Rob's celebrating with the crowd. Everyone's going wild. He's doing the he's doing the pose, okay. and then the lights get out. And then when the lights come back up, his old buddy from ECW, Raven, hoo, hoo, is hoo. in the ring, and he hits him with the Raven effect. Yes, and uh, lower third in the in the corner. That's the show. Raven's hitting the pose. Quote the Raven never more. Can Can he take the title home with him? Walk off with the belt. Yeah, it sounds like a Raven thing to do. To so, me. Yeah. so, so as the lower third comes up, I would love for Raven to grab the title, throw it over his shoulder, not look at the camera, walk away with the title, looking, uh, being on his back, and him walking out. I was about to say that sounds like a Raven move to me. Um, yeah. and so yeah, no, I love, I love this show. Uh, you've got great promo from Paul and Steve. Yep. Uh, you've got the great promo between all the women with along with the great women's match in that main event, you know, setting up uh, just dudes I love. I mean, my goodness. And uh, yeah, you talking about Hardcore Holly versus RVD. Yeah. It gives me the best of times from WWE's ECW. Mm-hmm. Well, there were very few, so it's yeah. not that hard. Well, I'd say there's only like, what, four of them? <laughs> <laughs> but but still. Uh, yeah, no, it's, that's good stuff. But here on my SmackDown, uh, Stephanie, and by that I mean me. <laughs> Stephanie Mac. <laughs> so uh, Stephanie has uh, let a very important division fall through the cracks these first two weeks. But tonight on SmackDown, it is getting the love it deserves, and that oh, is the Cruiserweight that? Singles Division. What's that? Oh, that's, yeah, I kind of figured that's where you were going with that. So, to, oh, uh, tonight on the cruiser, uh, in the Cruiserweight Singles Division, yep. we are having... The cruiserweight champion, Hurricane Helms, he is he is a uh, fighting uh, the big Val Boski, Val Venus, Sean Morley, uh, whatever name he's going by this week. Right. Uh, but before the match, uh, so first the, the 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 show opens with a Hurricane coming out. You know, stand back. There's Hurricane coming through. But before his opponent comes out, he's getting interviewed in the back by Ace reporter Gregory Helms. Legend of the game. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So Gregory Helms is interviewing Val Venus, and Val Venus is looking like, aren't you the guy? What? And what? Huh? what do you mean? What you talking about? What's that about? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, uh, Val comes out, and, and the whole thing is basically just a fun time comedy match. Yeah. Um, mostly posing. Uh, but, you know, both guys are good wrestlers. Uh, Val's not... He's no uh he's no world class. He's no he's sugar no hurricane. He's no sugar Shane Helms. Uh, he's no uh, hurricane, but... Not by a country mile, but... But they have a good time. He can hold his own. Exactly. And uh, Hurricane goes over because he's champ. And, you know, like I said, we're we're emphasizing the Cruiserweight division. Excellent. But while we're emphasizing the Cruiserweight division, again, which is 225 pounds and below, we uh, we have Hurricane join the commentary team with um, Taz and Michael Cole. Uh, because here on SmackDown, the commentary table is by ringside. So post-match, Hurricane... Throws on a headset, uh, sits down with Taz and Cole, and says um, that his 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 best friend, Ace reporter Gregory Helms, told him that up next there will be cruiserweight action when Maven takes on Funaki, and he's like, I just gotta see it. Um, it's uh, I love Funaki, man. <laughs> exactly, Funaki is good. Well, and the best part is so. I'm just going to jump ahead. Funaki wins this match. Yes! Um, but the, the reason is that Funaki <laughs> believes he is SmackDown number one announcer. Yeah. Uh, and he, his whole feud with Hurricane Helms is going to be over the fact that Funaki believes he should be SmackDown number one announcer mm. and is going to take that spot away from you, Hurricane. And Hurricane's like, what are you talking What's about? Talking? I'm the Cruiserweight champion. I'm not an announcer. And Funaki's like, we all know. I too smart. <laughs> I too smart. Exactly. Um, and so you know that's a that's it's a fun first half hour of the show where uh, both matches are um, fast paced, high octane action. Yep. And in the second one, Hurricane brings the humor on the the commentary. The T he. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so after this opening of these two opening matches, we we cut to the back where. Um, where Regal, um, Lance Storm, and Mr. Perfect are in a in a, a talking segment or an interview segment with, again, just random person who isn't Funaki or Gre- uh, Gregory Helms. Um, I don't remember who had a job back. Oh, Josh Matthews. We'll say it was Josh. Oh Matthews. yeah, Josh Matthews. There we go. So Josh oh. Matthews, 
He is back there, and he says, uh, uh, Lord Regal, uh, Stephanie McMahon has decreed that with your... And of course, he brings this fucking scroll with him. So, <laughs> so, um, um, so Matthew says to Regal, Stephanie McMahon has said since you refuse to defend the title, except for when you have to, that on March 18th, you will defend against whoever wins a fatal four-way this evening to determine your own contender. And Regal's like, I'm not worried about any of these challengers. <laughs> um, but, uh, but within it, Lance uh, breaks down, uh, in this promo, Lance Storm uh, breaks down how that Test, Matt Hardy, Edge, and Jeff Hardy are not on the same level as any of the three men in this shot, Mr. Perfect, Lance Storm, or Regal. And you can believe that because Lance Storm is a student of the game and you know he studied the law. Exactly. And so we finish the promo with Mr. Perfect uh, telling Lord, his, the Lord, his lordship, his William Lord. Regal, he says, uh, I'm sorry that I let you down last week when, uh, when I lost to Edge, but tonight in the main event, I'm laying down the perfect challenge. Any member of the SmackDown roster that thinks they're better than perfect, meet me out there and I will show you what perfection really is. Um, as they begin to walk off, there's commotion in the background, much how Triple H does SmackDown now, where you'll see the Hurt Business talking while Damage Control is walking into the shot. Mm -hmm. um, because I just like that type of production. Yeah. So as you see these yeah, three walking away, one big shot. Yeah. Um, Josh Matthews hears a commotion, looks over there, that's when the camera swings, and you see X-Factor, all three, x Pot, Credible, and Albert beating down the old man Hogan. Which is, again, crazy that it's 21 years ago that he was an old man. But whatever. The old man's getting beat down. The Rock... Yeah, no, he's a fossil now. But before <laughs> that, he was just an old man. Uh, but The Rock comes into the shot. They run off. And um, that's when Matthews goes over and he says, Rock, it's, a, it's great that you were here. And Rock says, well, me and Hogan, we're going to take these three to school tonight. Um... Meet us out in the ring, X Factor, because we're gonna lay the smackdown on all your candy, candy asses. asses. So, um, uh, up next is the Fatal Four Way, which is Test, Matt Hardy, Edge, and Jeff Hardy. Um, the funny thing is, the Hardys actually come down together because they they they've never broken up. They're still uh, brothers, brothers and friends. And, well, and, and I mean, baby yeah, faces. being brothers never changed. Oh well, yeah, 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 yeah. being brothers never changed. But uh, like Matt's never killed his dog or burned down his yeah, house or all the yeah, bull yeah, crap. crap. So in this fatal four way, um, Test is the powerhouse. He's he's you know big booting everybody. Edge, who's who's not much smaller than Test, uh, is definitely bringing the strength as well. But the Hardys cannot stop working together. So it's nowhere near a tag team match. It's just that Matt and Jeff are simpatico. They can't stop but being great at working together. And so um, at about the 12 minute mark is when the, I really need to give them a name, uh, but the team of perfect, perfect technique. Well, the thing is that, um, so you know how they currently call Regal the, the gentleman villain? Yeah. I almost think that, uh, I, I don't know. Th they need a name, but I also know Perfect's not going to be around for long, so whatever. You don't want to give them a name, and they can't use it. Exactly. So right maybe right. maybe don't give them a name, but the, the, the trio of Perfect, Regal, and Storm come out, and when they come out, they, um, they're they good at getting the referee's attention. So yeah. much so that as Edge is seemingly going to defeat Test, William Regal... Knocks out Edge with his brass knuckles. Nice. Um, when Test gets up, he gets kicked in the gut by Matt Hardy, who hits the twist of fate, which then has Jeff Hardy hit the Swanton Bomb. Matt doesn't want to interrupt the pinfall, so the ref's now seeing it. He doesn't want to interrupt the pinfall because his brother's the one who's getting the pin. Yeah. Matt's going to lose, but he just lets it happen because, you know, that's Jeff's my brother. In, yeah, my brother. And so Jeff, Your gets, money's my money. Uh, Jeff gets the one, two, three. Um, the referee raises his hand, him and Matt hug, and so on April 18th, Jeff Hardy will challenge William Regal for the Intercontinental Championship, and so after that, we get the handicap match of X-Factor versus Hogan and Rock. Cool. Um, 
Obviously, Hogan and Rock go over. That's it's very Hogan and Rock. And in the main event, the this the main event segment, we have the return of Lance Storm, Mr. Perfect, and William Regal. Um, Regal, who has proven in the year 2022 that he is great on commentary, although he proved it multiple times throughout the years, will actually be sitting ringside with uh, Cole and Taz. But uh, Storm will be standing at ringside with Perfect as they await the person who is accepting the open challenge from Mr. Perfect, and that is the returning Latino Heat, Eddie Guerrero. He la raza. Exactly. And so, as anybody can Im- uh, imagine on their own, Mr. Perfect versus Eddie Guerrero is a stellar, spectacular, oh. 100% great match. And in the main event of SmackDown, Eddie Guerrero defeats Mr. Perfect 1-2-3 after a frog splash. Lance Storm tries to slide in, but Eddie rolls out after the pinfall. Right, right. So um, we see Eddie shimmying up the ramp. You know, the fans are loving it. He's It's a good time. Everything right. is going his way. And I'm just so happy that uh, Eddie is getting the, the, the love he deserves because uh, yeah. that, that guy is... I love you. Exactly. Yeah. Not enough. And so that was my third week of SmackDown. I actually think it was my best one yet. Yeah, I was about to say. Uh, uh, like, don't get me wrong. I, I liked last week because we had that that continuation of Triple H's uh, attitude change. Yeah. And the first week was what needed to happen by setting up William Regal's smarts. But this yeah. one is is where it's no longer it's no longer doing the groundwork. It's actually paying off the stuff that has been set up. Exactly. So, it is now your turn once again, sir. Ah. This is the go-home show for Monday Night Raw going into Backlash. What went down on your Monday Night Raw go-home show? All right. Uh, so, uh, first things first, uh, Triple H is in the casino. Oh, I love it. And so, he's, uh, if, you, if you guys have been keeping track at home, he's uh, been jet flying. Limousine riding. Kiss stealing. And now he's wheeling and dealing. Oh, ah, but goodness. the wheeling and dealing here is a little different than what we expect. Okay. Triple H is talking about backlash and how, as the world champion, he's decided to grace us all with his presence and defend the world title against a lucky number one contender from Monday Night Raw. And how does he decide this? Well, he puts up the big roulette wheel, and in it, it sorry, on it are the faces. I love name. this so much. I, lo- I, I want this to be real yeah. so bad. Yep. And it's just all the singles wrestler, singles male wrestlers on Monday Night Raw. And he says, all right, I'm going to give this two spins here. And whoever the two faces it lands on will wrestle tonight to determine who will be wrestling me at um, Backlash. Yeah. Um, so, of course, this thing's rigged as hell. But, <laughs> but so, on it. <laughs> so, um... I don't mean to interrupt because this is great setup, mm-hmm. but there's a, there's a man who comes to mind when 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 this was when when you talk about this right yeah so on his tights uh, when he challenged Cody Rhodes and also previously when he defended against Cody Rhodes yeah. it said on his tights the dealer do you remember who that was it was Nick Aldis oh yeah so if so Nick Aldis is a free agent as of. I don't know, like a week ago, in the world yeah, of professional right. wrestling. Yeah. And so, I, again, I love that you're having Triple H do this, but the, the beautiful thing is that Nick Aldis could easily do that yeah. in this now, in the here now. Oh, big time. Yes. Continue, yeah. please. That's but, good yes. stuff. So, obviously, uh, Triple H has rigged the wheel, and Flair knows that, and he knows that. So, his first spin, he spins it, and the first name that comes up is Christian. Okay. Well, I, I love Christian, and you love Christian, yes. and Mick Foley loved Christian. And that's great. There's, and, of course, Triple H's like, Christian! <laughs> oh, crap. Like, he's over here yeah. laughing, like, wow. Well, well, here's here's what I would have Triple H say after he calms down. He would yeah. say, that is a great tag team wrestler. Great. Top-notch tag yeah. team wrestler. Ah. I feel like I feel like he's, I feel like he actually has been tag team champion with Jericho, yep. Edge. Yep. Uh, anybody else? I mean, probably somebody else. 
But regardless, yeah. he's, he's still a really good tag team wrestler. He's not he's on that not on that level of Arn Anderson. Actually, if you yeah. say he say that to Rick, he's like he's on a level. He's of not he's not an Arn Anderson. He's not an Arn Anderson tag mean, team wrestler. But I, he's a he's a he's a pretty good. Yeah, he's a pretty good wrestler. Like, like he's a he's a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would give him. All right, what's the next what's the next well, field? Spin. So so while Triple H was laughing, he was banging against. The uh, yeah, the yeah, roulette yeah, wheel. Yeah, I like it. So when so he broke it. So when he spun it again, it landed on Kurt Angle, and Triple H is like, <laughs> no, 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 not now, no, not this, no, no, hold on, I, that, that was that's not the one. That was a I need a respin. I need a respin. And then Mick says, oh, oh, and then because Mick has a casino too, because you know he's of already booked the show for that. Yeah. Night. So he's like, oh, Trisha versus Kurt Angle. That sounds like a great match. Yeah. And then says, good job, Hunter. And, and walks off and goes uh, and plays blackjack or something or whatever. And, and Flair's like, sorry, man, nothing I can do. Exactly. So that's my main event for the night, Christian versus Kurt Angle. Um, throughout the show, um, like I said, um, so I forgot to mention this last week, but uh, Jazz is sitting at ringside for the Molly versus Trish match, and he's, she's also sitting at ringside. For the Molly versus Lita match, can, can, can I suggest that Trish is at the announce table with uh, Jr. and King? Totally would. Uh, because, uh, like, excuse me, I don't know how King's gonna be able to handle that. But we'll, well, we'll that's the work. thing is like he, he'll be freaking out. Yeah. Uh, but the the, w- the reason I like this is because Jazz has respect for Molly. Mm. She has to be prepared for Lita in case she goes over, exactly. and and Trish, she knows she'll be wrestling. Uh, leader, regardless of the outcome of the match, so exactly. it just it just it just shows the importance of this division. Exactly, like everyone's out there, like Jazz is literally out there, not on commentary. She's taking notes. Exactly, yeah. I saying, like that. Okay, I see. I see what we're doing here. All right, I'm gonna have to watch out for that moon salt. Mm-hmm. All right, and then um, after that, uh, Jazz goes backstage and goes, you know, this number one contenders match is huge. Uh, really, it'll be a segment or whatever yes. after, but. Just talking to Mick, this number one contender's match, but I, I feel like as the champion, I should have a match on Backlash as well. And Mick's like, you know what? That's a great idea. You have anyone in mind for a challenger? And she throws out Ivory. So, I like it. I, Ivory's been gone for a while. Yep. But established star, people know who she is. Can I, can I tell you why that I love this so much? What? When China won her first and only women's championship, mm-hmm. it was over Ivory. Yep. And if. Jazz wants to overtake the ninth wonder of the world in the minds of the viewer. The uh, exactly. Then I think her defeating Ivory on pay per view is the way to go. Exactly, which is why I booked the match. Later. Smart. Um. So Mick Mick says uh, Jazz says I love it. I'm sorry, Mick. I was right the first time. Yes. Mick says I love it. We'll make it happen. I'll sign it right now. Don't you worry. Everything's handled. So uh, we have our two women's matches uh, for Backlash. Going to be huge. Um, the Dudleys uh, come out and say, you know what? Everyone else is having a number one contenders match. I feel like the tag titles should do the same. Oh, that's funny. So, um, the Dudleys uh, throw out the two newest tag teams um, that were established uh, last week. Uh, so, Holly and Saturn uh, decided to team up and uh, Sean, Stasiak, Meat and Billy. <laughs> Meat and Billy. <laughs> uh, we're uh, signed and they said the winner of this match will be the new number one contenders and will face up to Backlash. And so, uh, Sean and Billy um, and Holly and Saturn have a nice little tag match, about 10 minutes or so. It's, Makes sense. It does, does the job. Uh, but uh, Holly and Saturn go over. They're really feeling themselves. But um, then the Dudleys come out and say, Great job, guys. You won the match. You won. Now you get to face the Dudley boys in a tag team tables match. So you don't feel like you won anything <laughs> at this point. Yep. Yep, so that's a that's a tag title match sorted. Uh, Gold Dust uh, defends the uh, Horrorcore title, and I'm gonna have him defend it against Scotty. It's a fun little match. Scotty does the worm, loses at the end, but it's it it's a fun little match crowd, similar to your um, Hurricane versus Valvita. There match. you go. So uh, can, some can, 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 can I, the ball. Can I make a suggestion post match? Yeah. So. Um, so you said Scotty doesn't win, right? Yeah. But obviously the crowd is behind Scotty body because he's a fan favorite. Exactly. So on his way up uh, the ramp, I would love for him to to feel dejected and sad, and um, you just see it in his face. He's yeah. like, man, he's I, 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 let, I let the crowd down. Yeah. 
So what I would love to see happen, uh, as as Scotty Tuhai is going up the ramp, is for the lights to go down. Everybody thinks it's an assault, right? Yep. But no, when the lights come up, Big Keish is standing next to Little Hottie, and he pats him on the back. He's like, points to the ring, and they both run, and we start doing the dance, right? Wow. Yeah, and you, you hear the music, and the crowd goes wild. And so, uh, and that way, you know, it shows the importance of Scotty's loss because he's, he, he, he feels it. Yeah. But, but he it also, the, the power of friendship yes. brings his spirits back up. Classic, you got a friend in me. You got, oh, I love it. You got a friend in me. And uh, that actually helps us on the way to the pay per view because yes. on the pay per view of Backlash, we have the re- reunited Big Quiche and Little Hottie in a tag action. But yep. we'll get there when correct, we get there. Correct, correct. And I'll run through all that as we do. Absolutely. Uh, next segment, we've got a couple more things here. It's just tiny enough house cleaning. Uh, Rob comes out and demands his U.S. title back that he, that, no, that he didn't lose to that Raven. Because he's absolutely furious with Raven for stealing it. And Raven, in classic, like, picture any great Raven promo. This is pretty much what this is. Raven's got the U.S. title, and he's just dangling it. And he's just like, Rob, let's be honest. You and me both know you don't deserve this. This is, this is something that I deserve. This is something that I've worked hard for. And you know damn well you can't beat me in that ring. You know. And can, 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 yeah, can, can, can the match that we're promoting be Raven's rules? Yeah. Oh, that's, my that's, goodness. That, that's where this is going. I probably should have wrote that on the thing. That's okay, that's book. okay, but I just, oh, so happy, yeah. so happy. But so, no, so, in WCW, Raven will always use that that mentality. He says, you want to match with me? Yeah. you got to do it my way. Exactly. And that would give full credence and justification for him to take the title yeah. is for him to convince Rob that if you want the belt back, you got to beat me in my match. Yeah. And, oh, man, yeah. this is good. That's a good oh, show. This, this is like, so fun. Oh, huh. But, yeah, so Raven does the cocky Raven promo. Rob says, I demand a match with you at Backlash. And Raven says, okay. But only if we wrestle in Raven's rules. I love it. And I'm not as cool as Raven. I can't do the Raven. It's all good. But it, you, you guys get the vibes. You get the point. You get the grunge, punk metal yes. type situation. So Rob agrees like a stupid baby. <laughs> of course. But the, but the upside is Rob isn't averse to hardcore matches. Exactly. That's basically what Raven so he, is anyway. Yeah, that, that's all it is. But, I mean... God, I, if we could bring in Bill Alfonso, it would be perfect to have him <laughs> for this one night only at Backlash. I'd, but have, I, a, I'd have a ball. Yeah. I'd have a ball at Bill Alfonso for sure. But, um, yeah, so that match is set up for the pay-per-view. Um, Let me check. Ah, okay. And then, um, yep, last but not least is uh, obviously the main event I set up earlier in the night. Um, we have Triple H now at the arena biting his teeth because he's like, God, I hope Kurt doesn't wait. I don't want to actually have to work for the show. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sitting there, Flair sitting there like, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine. It's like maybe he'll trip and fall on a banana peel or something and something crazy will happen. And um, so uh, Kurt comes out, American Hero, he's doing his spin. The, you, 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 know, you know Kurt's entrance. You suck. Yeah. You suck. You suck. You suck. But, and then Christian comes out and... He comes out with the haircut he's going to have four years in the future to, to show that he's serious now. So you know the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about it. Yeah. You couldn't believe how hard it was was to find a long-haired Christian for when we did the draft video. Exactly. Because he's so known for that. He's so iconic for cut. that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Because, I mean, before his hair... His, I mean, was there really any individual pictures of Christian with long hair? That like, was hard was always, to find, yeah. He was always with Edge. Yep. When, in that period of his life. So, like... Him being the established star, I associate with that haircut, Absolutely. which is why he has that now. Yeah. So the no, crowd I'm, pops. I'm, I'm totally for it. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a part of the five rules that you can't break, so yep. you can cut people's hair all you but want. So I can cut their hair whenever <laughs> I feel like it. But uh, Kurt's, Kurt's like, okay, I, I respect the new haircut. You're still going to lose, but I respect the new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and Christian, uh, this whole match is just being punked by Kurt. Like, Kurt's having an amateur wrestling match with him. He's over here thinking he's in the Olympics again. <laughs> And he's like, two points, two points. And he's going crazy. You know what I keep thinking you're talking about when you do this? Chad Gable. Chad Gable. Yeah. <laughs> like, how is that guy not getting pushed? I don't know. How is it's that so guy? confusing to me. Because he, he could easily be the most, I, I fit, he's the most over person in the company to me, aside from Seth. Unless you can think of somebody else. Well, I mean. At least in, in men's division. 
I was going to say, currently, uh, I think it goes like this. Uh, Sammy and Roman are almost like Sorry, yeah, neck yeah, and neck. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Kevin Owens is in that, in that conversation. Ballpark. So is uh, Seth Rollins. He's he's in there. And then an argument could very well be made for Chad Gable. And like, you tell me. You, so he's you, at minimum top ten. You, 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 who doesn't want to see Chad Gable versus Seth Rollins? Who doesn't want to see Chad Gable versus Kevin Owens? Who doesn't want to see Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn? Who doesn't want to see Chad Gable versus uh, Roman Reigns? I want to see all I want those to see matches. Van Damme too, since we're on a run. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> but it's it's uh it's just the fact that it was uh my lord, great stuff. But um, yeah, they have a nice um little classic match. Kurt's pretty much punking him the entire match, pushing him down, pie facing him, kicking him while he's down, and he's laughing. And then uh, the Tron lights up, and it's the it's the countdown clock. And Chris Jericho comes out on the top of the ramp, and Kurt's like, what the hell is going on here? And that's when Christian sneaks up, hits the unprettier, and pins Kurt Angle. Can, can I can I uh, help flush out my personal vision of this show? Sure. I want Christian, Kurt, and Jericho to be like the three pictures on that roulette wheel next to each other, right? Yeah. And so that really... And obviously you've got all the other names too. You got you got Meat and you got Gun and you got all those guys, right? But these three dudes yeah. are really like the guys you think are gonna be hit when yeah. you when you see spending like because they're they're like the tippity top the guys. The, the, the well, names. not Christian obviously. Actually, no, but it's it, Chris and Kurt are the people you think yeah. are gonna win, right? Exactly. Uh, Jericho and Angle. Uh, but and so I'm so glad you booked him here because in my mind I was if you didn't I was gonna suggest that he jumps. Or gets involved somehow because he's too important not to be emphasized. Exactly. So I love that you already did it. Yep. But um, Christian gets the big win over number one pick, Kurt Angle. Kurt yeah. Angle, again, dejected because he's the number one guy, but he's lost again. Doesn't know what to do with it is, it's like It's like this is a storyline or something. Yep. And then Chris Jericho is sitting up top of the ramp laughing at him. Meanwhile, in the back, we have Triple H going, Yes! Yes! <laughs> He did it! He did it, Rick! He did it! <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it's the best thing, because Triple H is losing his mind just with happiness. Dude, I would love for Rick to be like, maybe he can be an art of the, the now, <laughs> because of, because of uh, you know their, their connection to Arn Anderson. Exactly. He, he worked for the company, so might as well make reference to him. Excellent. Oh my and, goodness, and, like, I really want to watch this backlash now. Yeah, this is fun. There's one last thing. So Mick's leaving the building. Show's over. Been great stuff. And Austin walks up to him and goes, "Hey, last week was a uh, was a lot for me, and it's I've had time to think about it, and I really want to wrestle that new kid. Give me Brock Lesnar at Backlash." And Mick goes, "Are you sure about this?" He's like, "Yeah." And that sets up that match. I like it. All right. I like it a lot. What do you have on your SmackDown? Good. Whew. Stuff? So. Because I want to get to, to Backlash, because I really want to, to see this vision play out. I don't care about my SmackDown. <laughs> so I'm going to race through this thing as fast as I can on 4 11 of 2022. We open with Funaki versus Tajiri. Funaki once again goes over because we're helping to set up for him to take on the Hurricane for the Cruiserweight Championship down the line. After that, we've got a tag team encounter of Mr. Perfect and William Regal. They are taking, oh, well, they're accompanied to the ring by Lance Storm. Obviously. They are taking on Edge and Matt Hardy. They are accompanied to the ring by Jeff Hardy. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I actually booked this match to go 45 minutes because Damn. William Regal, Mr. Perfect, Edge, and Matt Hardy. You tell me they can't do it, they can do it. And we also got the added element of Jeff and Lance on the outside. So... Uh, the reason I book it to go so long is because I, I just want Edge to feel like a top guy, even though he don't have the title. Yeah, yeah. And I want William Regal with his Intercontinental title to feel like a top guy. Mr. Perfect is an all-time great, Yep. so why would you not? And I've, I've long had love for Matt Hardy, so that's why I gave this match so much time. Um, Edge, pins, a- Edge pins perfect again. What? No, oh, thanks. Yeah, saying. Edge pins perfect again because perfect again. Not long for this world, uh, both in the employment sense and unfortunately, this is also the the, the entire life, life sense. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. <sighs> Booker T, who was healed during Simple. all of, uh, Booker T, was healed during all of the invasion. 
mm-hmm. uh, storyline, makes his first appearance on SmackDown since the merger of the two companies, WCW and World Wrestling Federation, mm-hmm. and is clearly a good guy. He um, He's taking on Test, mm-hmm. who is aggressive throughout the whole match. Booker wins, and post-match, he cuts a promo saying that uh, he's ready to lead SmackDown into uh, new frontiers. He's interrupted by X Factor, Albert, X Pac, and Justin Crabble all come out and surround the ring. Uh, when you hear, uh, well, well, it's the Big, big show. show, and, and uh, uh, Big Show makes his way uh, out, standing side by side with Booker T. Uh, X Factor back down. Um, I love how X Factor is like the main team of your show. It, it, it actually is a ball considering how they were booked in real life. Well, I, I, a, I like their music. B, yeah. I love all the participants. And C, uh, I'm actually going about to murder them. So, ah, yeah, um, got it. so the reason I'm I'm putting them in such a high profile position is because uh, it's actually next week. So coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> coming near you. Coming soon. Um, uh, X Factor. Changes and then the week after that, well, the the founding member is ousted. But yeah. that's just a little teaser. So we finish this episode with Farouk and Bradshaw. Woo! Um, yeah, Bradshaw. Oh, they're in the back playing cards and smoking cigars as William Regal stops by in, uh, uh, in in to inquire about the APA's rates for protection. The duo has no time for Regal, who is. Uh, a cheapskate and a dirty scoundrel. Um, what? That doesn't sound like real. And so, uh, uh, we, we can actually have that play out before the X Factor Booker T Big Show thing. Yeah. It actually makes more sense for. So, uh, that is the semi main, and the main is the Booker Test X Factor Big Show stuff. But yeah, that is the conclusion of my SmackDown, and the reason we're going by it so fast because I really want to get to Backlash. It sounds so good. Uh, Cause Josiah told me what he was doing before the show started. Exactly. So here we are. It's Sunday. It's the pay per view. It is the first Alpha Entertainment Worldwide branded event. It is Backlash. It is the big show after the granddaddy of them all, WrestleMania. And uh, well, how does this show open, good sir? So picture Jr. said everything Oz just said, and that's how that's how we started along with the fireworks and everything. And then we started My baseball meeting. cap is a cowboy hat. There you go. There you go. And we started immediately with the glass breaking. You know how it goes. Austin's Austin's music hits the speakers. Crowd goes wild. Austin's stomping out to the ring. A little less confident than he normally seems. Mm-hmm. Almost like he's questioning himself. Like he's taking everything Paul Heyman said, what, two weeks ago by yes, now? Yes, it was to heart. Ago. Yeah. Well, no, the beautiful thing about our booking, whether it was our WrestleMania uh, last month or this Backlash Now, both times, we are starting out so hot. Yeah. We opened WrestleMania with the undisputed title match of Jericho and Triple H because yeah. we closed the show with Hogan and Rock. Exactly. Now, we're opening with Stone Cold Steve Austin versus... Brock Lesnar. The most dangerous man, the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. There it is. Of course, Heyman accompanies Brock. And Brock just stares down Austin like he's some, like he's some dirty dog. Like he's an old... He's old yellow, waiting to be put down. And uh, these, these two go out, they have a match, and basically, picture that John Cena match versus Brock Lesnar, and that's pretty much what this match was. Oh, you mean the one where John didn't get any offense? Yeah. Like, I, 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 so, it's funny that you say that, because that is great, but the match I thought of oh, it's was not, it's, Hogan versus Brock on SmackDown, where... Hogan is bleeding, right? And Austin's, Austin's a great bleeder. That's probably a good one because it's close then, to this time period. And then and then it ended with a bear hug where the blood is pouring down Hogan's face. And Hogan's not nearly as good of a seller, in my not opinion, anywhere close. as Steve Austin. Not. So if Steve, who is now a pro at gigging, is bleeding and and, and, and getting, it goes out to the bear hug, that way he doesn't have to put his shoulders to the mat. Oh, he wasn't going to put his shoulders in the matter. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just uh, just as a, a theoretical. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but I don't care. What, maybe it's an amalgamation of those two matches. Yeah. But we we it's we, a mix. We, the, the point is yes. The the most dangerous man proves why he's the most dangerous man in this match. Yes. Because he's beating Steve Austin's tail. Um, like probably midway through the match, uh, like I said, Austin gets busted open. He's bleeding, and as Jr. says, he's got a crimson mask. By God. 
And uh, at this point, Brock's just throwing him around. And let, let's be honest, especially at this point in his career, Steve Austin's injuries are piling up. People know his injuries are piling up. Uh, his and confidence now, is broken, too. Yeah, his Both confidence in real is life broken. and in, in the storyline we're telling. Yep. Brock's, Brock's looking dominant. And Austin hits a surprise stunner. Cover, covers uh, Brock. Brock kicks out of one. <laughs> kicks out of one. Love Steve it. Steve Austin is in complete disbelief. Confidence drops even more. Brock gets up, nails him with the nastiest clothesline you can think of. And then Heyman looks dead in Brock's eyes. Brock hits the F5. And then Heyman says, stop, stop, don't pin him. Finish him. Finish him. So, I don't know if you remember this, but Brock used to have a different submission before he had the Kimura. He had the Brock lock. And I don't know if you remember the Brock lock, but it's literally just Brock takes the leg of his opponent, slaps it around his huge traps, and just... Flexes and wrenches and tears the ligaments in the knee. Well, and, and while Austin's, standing up, and Austin's known for having bad knees too. Terrible knees. So Brock is shaking around. Austin's knocked out from this F five. He's course. not even moving. Yep. So the referee is like, "Stop. We're done. Stop. Oh, That's too it. much. I it's too it. much. That's so good." And the show opens. This is less than ten minutes. Uh, and the only reason this goes ten minutes is because Brock absolutely dominates. Steve I Austin. love it. Like, I love Steve, but you have to do this. Oh, you have to do it. Especially since he'll be gone soon, so I really have to do this. But this is his last pay-per-view, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Uh Uh-huh. So, but... Oh, oh, that's so good. But, yeah, so Brock absolutely dominant. Comes out looking like, well, the next big thing. Yes, exactly. Looking like the most dangerous man. (laughs) And so, um, WWE never did this, but in AEW, both real AEW and our fictitious AEW... Um, we are going to institute a policy that when there's blood on the mat, we're replacing the mat. Because yeah. I think that is one of the most genius things that AEW does for the health of their... Wrestlers. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, I was going to say talents, but yeah, wrestlers, exactly. So, yeah, that's true, because post- have to be in there too, yeah. Oh, exactly. And so post-match, um, Paul does all the talking for Brock in the back. Yeah. So uh, uh, Austin's carted off. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe not full on stretcher out, but like nah, he stretch- can't walk. So exactly, he can't uh, walk. He's unconscious. Exactly. So I, I, um, I say a stretcher does. Yeah, stretcher's stretcher's fine. I ain't mad at it. But um, but uh, Paul is cutting a promo for Brock in the back. Uh, and he, at the conclusion I of let's, let's make it top of the ramp. Top of the ramp. That's that's good. Actually, because it's so it's so Austin three sixteen to exactly. do it at the top of the ramp, and you exactly. can see Austin being taken out, that, that, it, just like Jake the Snake Robert was all those years ago. <sighs> it's it's perfect. It's perfect. Wrestling's a circle. So Love it. what I was gonna say is though, at this point, and the importance of this is and, at this and, point, and Brock, visualize Austin's blood all over Brock's yes. body. So at this point, Paul just does this, and at which is. Signifying that Brock has defeated Al Snow on television and now Steve Austin on pay per view because now it's two. Yeah, uh, it's important because after Undertaker defeated Austin at WrestleMania, he did this because he had ten victories at WrestleMania. Exactly. And so, but the the reason we're doing this is so they can take the mat off of the <laughs> the yeah, so I have the time to change and, and do that. Yep. But uh, it's it's both for the cleanliness and for the storyline purposes. Exactly. But after the promo, the carding off, and the canvas has been changed, yep. we now lead to our second match or Josiah's second match tonight, which is that a tag team. Stars our universe. So. Oh, exactly. Uh, so uh, a tag team encounter where the man formerly known as Meat. Sean Stasiak teams with the man formerly known as the One, which uh, meant nothing. <laughs> but um, but 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 nowadays he is known as Daddy Ass. Uh, but yeah, so Daddy Ass teams with uh, Meet Sean Stasiak. God, they both need better names right now. Boy, um, don't they. And so, um, they're they're taking on the reunited too cool. Yes. And this is um, I'll, I'll be honest. The crowd the crowd's crushed. They oh. their, their hero just got murdered. Absolutely. So they need something to build them back up, which is why I reunited Too Cool, too cool and I'm glad Oz did it the uh, way he suggested, which was a great suggestion. Can, uh, can I ask your opinion on um, yeah. Rikishi's attire? Like his, with his eyes being up? Yeah, that would be the that would be the attire I speak of. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm up to changing it if that's what you're trying to suggest. I would like to keep him in his bad, bad man leather gear. Okay. Um. Reason being is it's very um, street, uh, cool, 
uh, you know, big quiche, like I said, and Scotty Tuhati can have very similar uh, a dress attire coming down. So big quiche, little hottie, uh, they come down to the music, the dance, they both take off the the the, the accoutrements, the coats, the, the glasses, the glasses, or whatever, the keep it all to the side, but then they wrestle in uh, leather pants uh, like Rikishi wore when he was a, a bad, bad man cool. in uh, Storyline. Because that's that. basically how I had him when he was with the Most Dangerous Alliance, okay. and I just prefer him that way. I understand that Vince liked having his cheeks out. Oh, uh, that's because Vince liked it when Rikishi sat on people's faces. That is correct. But... But yeah. I, I just think that this is a a polite or a, a better a better, better visual. Better visual. <laughs> well, listen, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. I don't, I don't really care what they wear. So, I'm, thank uh, you. We got we got other attire suggestions. Throw them at me, because um, unless it's like storyline wise, like I have them dressed like this for a reason. I don't. I really don't care what they cool. what wear. So yeah, the only reason is I don't like seeing his ass. You know, well, well I was gonna say his dimples, but <laughs> 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 all the craters on the the cheeks. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, um, nice little ten minute match here. Uh, two cool wins. Um, it's their first match back, so obviously they have to win. Uh, Meat and Billy can take a loss. Well, and and this since they already did this loss can uh, further help get them to try and discover who they are. Exactly. So um, when Stasiak went on a losing streak in this real world timeline he he went crazy and called himself planet, planet stasiac, stasiac. Yeah, I do remember and that. so maybe planet stasiac can be orbited by something gun i i don't know we'll figure it out i'll come up with it later exactly and what i'm saying is like to make that basically it won't happen in this episode. make their alliance make sense right um but yeah so two cool wins they uh they pull a fan out in the, from the crowd and they're all gay they're all excited put the glasses on them and they just boogie down Gets the gets the crowd back in the mood for the pay per view. Love that it. Assassination, which is why it's booked the way it was. <laughs> assassination. That's, yeah. that's such an accurate term. <laughs> but um, next up is a uh, Kurt Angle versus Chris Jericho. As as you saw last week, uh, Jericho in Kurt's mind cost him the match mm-hmm, against mm-hmm. Christian. So Kurt wants some revenge. So he and Jericho come out. This is our first like match match. This is our first right twenty minute classic. Yeah, because the the opening match was to establish, and the the, the secondary match was to get people over that devastation. But yeah. this one, like you yeah, said, this, this, this going to deliver exactly. This is going to be the match that people are like, oh my god, this is incredible. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, amazing back and forth between Kurt and you've seen a Kurt and Kurt and Jericho match, <laughs> exactly. So so many good ones. Yeah, there's I literally can't think. Of, can you think of a bad one? I don't. I don't know if Kurt Angle has ever had a bad match. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And Chris so, Jericho. Oh. If, if he does, it wasn't his fault. So. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I love Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho's amazing, man. But uh, Jericho, Jericho and Angle are doing their thing back and forth. Ankle lock walls at Jericho. Uh, Angle's Angle's uh, just wrestling Jericho. Jericho's uh, showing that high flying cruiserweight acumen that he uh, had established in WCW when he was world champion. And um, the match ends uh, with Jericho nailing a lion insult and pinning Kurt Angle, giving Kurt his third loss in a month. And Angle, much like the other two matches, is lost, confused, doesn't know what to do with himself, can't believe that this has happened again, and is starting to question what 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 he needs to do to turn this around. And he, he walks out, and he's heading to the back, and... Um, No, let's say that for another second. So I'll, I'll come back to my thought a little later. Next up, first woman's match of the show. Number one contenders match between Trish Stratus and Lita. And again, these two have never had a bad match. So. And, and I can remember one where one had a broken nose, the other one busted their leg. So uh-huh. they still did it. Yeah, and they, <laughs> they still had a banger. So I, I, I guess like the the vibe I'm going for here is the first main event match on Raw mm-hmm. type type situation minus Lita almost killing herself. Right. But um, these these two have a back and forth banger. Um, it ends with uh, Lita uh, nailing the moon saw on Trish. But big match, no losers in this one. Crowd loved it. Everyone applauded. Had a ball. Um, it's great stuff by those two. And as uh, Lita's walking out, uh, Jazz's music hits. Because she wanted to give Ivory the opportunity to come out second, so well, that, not just that, but she has showed such reverence and 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 respect yes. to 
uh, all the women within this division that mm-hmm. it would only make sense to me that she would want to congratulate the victor exactly. herself. Exactly. So she comes out, they shake hands on the top of the ramp, said, I will see you down the line. And then Jazz makes a And that's big confidence, too. That's yeah. big confidence. <laughs> big confidence. Jazz holding the world title above her head as the dominant champion that she is. And uh, gives Ivory the chance to come out second. Crowd applause because I, I, even at I this gotta point, tell you, I got I, I, I to interrupt real quick. Yeah. If, if money was no object, like if I hit the lottery, mm-hmm. I would love to animate this universe. Ooh. Like just so many visuals of this. Like yeah. when when you're saying like just the pictures. Yeah, yeah. When you're saying that uh, that she's holding that title, I'm seeing it in my mind. I'm like, right. Hey. If I got if I got the money, I would animate this I'd entire this, this whole I'd... this whole show. Oh, it'd be so good. It'd be so good. I, 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 really, I honestly wish this happened in real life because I, I could see all this like being a thing. Absolutely. Well, and I don't know if you're going where you're... I don't know if, if you're if taking where Kurt where I think you're taking Kurt, but I have I have a vision of where he could go in my mind, and it's just so fun. It makes yeah. me smile. Yeah, it's great stuff. I mean, we might not be thinking the same thing. That's okay. We might be thinking the same sure. thing, but either way... It's, it's going to be great. Absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, so Ivory makes a way out? Yep, so Ivory makes a way out. Uh, they have another great match. This one's about 15 minutes or so. But um, it's um, it's very back and forth, but it, it, it ends as you expected it. And Jazz hits her triple power bomb. The crowd's it's getting a little bit more behind her. They're doing the, oh, one. It's like, oh, two. And bang, three. And that, that does it. Great, great match. Um, Jazz, again, much like she did with uh, Molly, shakes Ivory's hand, thanks her for the great match, raises her hand in respect. Uh, Ivory vacates the ring to give Jazz her moment. And then uh, we uh, cut to the back, and uh, Kurt Angle's just sitting in the in the trainer's room, getting ice on his back from those Walls of Jericho attempts. Can can, can Jonathan Coachman walk up with a mic and, and want to talk to him? Yeah, and be like, I'm like, Kurt, Kurt, how you feeling? How you feeling right now, Kurt? And Kurt's just like, you don't get the F away from me. I'm going to kill you. And he walks away. And, and that's when Goldust, our hardcore champion, walks in and just like, Coach, Coach man, come on, man. This is this is embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. This man is dejected. He's lost match after match after match. Like, he is feeling pitiful. Look at him. He's down in the dumps. Look at him. His hair doesn't even shine the way it used to. Man, it almost looks like he's bald. I, 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 true I, story. I, it was had a big, the big problems with that hairline. I tell you what, <laughs> poor guy, and, and and Kurt just the rage in his eyes as Gold Dust is just cheering him up by cracking on him. Of is, course, is, is phenomenal, and 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 that ends the segment. And Kurt uh, tries to roll off the thing to try and grab Gold Dust, but his back is still killing him, so he can't. <laughs> but like Gold Dust. That's, Kurt can make this funny. He's Kurt. he's great at comedy, absolutely. Great. He's great at uh, situational comedy. And the reason I have these tee he joke moments is because it's our U.S. title match next, and it's the hardcore Raven Rule match, Rob versus Raven. So Rob comes out as the U.S. champion without a U.S. championship. <laughs> yep. And he is visually like po, like very uncharacteristically upset. Yep. Rob Van Dam. And Raven comes out like he is the world champion. He's got the belt around his waist. Um, he's got his classic Raven gear on, mm-hmm. and he's he's doing the he's doing the gimmick. Yep. And as he's uh sitting in the you know how he sits in the uh, corner. in the corner absolutely yeah and is bragging he's not even paying attention to Rob, which is how Rob can sneak up on him with a Van Terminator Whew. or Van Dam. What's the one coast to coast? Is it Terminator or Daminator? Uh, Van Daminator is when he's hold- the opponent's holding a chair, so it's Terminator. Terminator. All right. And yeah, so he kicks kicks the snot out of him, and Raven didn't see it coming. And Rob, that's that's our hot star that gets well. Him going. And and the best part about that is, so you you see Raven in the corner, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and all you see is Rob come into the shot, and it's not to the replay that you see where he was at. Yeah. And that's the beauty of well, what you're doing. Yeah, especially because Raven, you know, his whole interest is in the dark. Mm-hmm. So yep. No one, if you weren't looking at Rob before the lights went out, you have no idea where he's at. Yep. So that's how he caught him by surprise, and they. These shoes just fight. They, they fight. They fight all around the arena. It's Raven's rule, so it doesn't matter where they're, where they're at. They fight in the crowd. Crowd's losing it. Um, obviously, there's blood because it's Raven's rules. Um, but uh, but it's, it, it's absolutely insane. Raven hits a Raven effect on the announce table, but has to drag Rob back into the ring in order to pin him. Mm-hmm. He gets the one, the two. Rob kicks out. It's a big pop from the crowd. Raven... Uh, 
goes to get a pick any arc or weapon a bat, two by four. Well, I know one thing that he was big on doing was setting up a chair in the middle of the ring and hitting a drop toe hold. That's how he busted busted Scotty Riggs' eye yeah. and, and getting him into the flock was hitting a drop toe hold where Riggs' head hit the chair and it took out his eye. Ooh, and so a, a chair is a, a very uh, appropriate weapon for him to grab. Thank you, Oz. So he gets the chair. He sets it up in the middle of the ring. And he lines Rob up, goes for the drop toe hold. Rob reverses it, hits a drop toe hold of his own. Raven is yeah, knocked selling. out. Yeah, yeah he's, he's selling. He's knocked out. Rob, quick as a quick quick as lightning. Yes. Hops up to the top rope, nails a five star frog splash, and retains. I almost said wins, but mm. retains is. But he US still title. wins to retain. Yeah, yeah. wins to retain his uh, U.S. title. Great match. Rob is still U.S. champion. Crowd goes wild. Beautiful Raven, title too. Oh, gorgeous title. Love it. And I was going to show it on the screen right now. Of course. <laughs> and then brings it back. Um, but uh, Rob does his thing. Everyone's loving it. Um, of course, they changed the mat for um, the second time of the night. The second time of the night. And uh, while they're doing that, we get a backstage clip of uh, Triple H warming up for his match with Christian. And by warming up, I mean he's sitting on the couch eating popcorn. Like, ah, oh, this is gonna be a cake can, walk. Can we can we have Arn Anderson uh, in this segment? So, Please. in my mind. Uh, which I already stated in the video, we, we make reference to Arn Anderson, right? And and so I would love for him to be in the shot because what was Arn's big thing with Cody in AEW? It's like, oh, you, you're, you've you gotten lethargic. You're, you're more worried about roads to the top than, ti- you know, winning titles. And so I would love for Arn to just not, not say it yet, but just mm-hmm. think out loud or uh, to, to think, and you'd see on his face, he didn't say it yet, but just think to himself that, it's, he's not. He's not carrying himself like. The, he's not carrying himself like the top guy. Like the, the top, champion. exactly. And so, uh, yeah, yeah I just Rick, think, Rick's not there tonight for whatever reason. And so having Arn be there because, like I said, he was referenced to. Mm-hmm. Then I think that would be smart. I like it. Cool. Toss it in there. I just need the segment so they can change the mats. Absolutely, but that works. And then meanwhile, you also got Christian in the back. He's 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 uh doing push ups, uh, stretching. Yeah. Going, going over his... Uh, his Actually taking things seriously. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, this is the most important match of his life. Because it is. Because it is. <laughs> and, um, great stuff there. Uh, then we got, uh, obviously, your tables match, Dudley's versus uh, Holly and Saturn. Uh, this is a nice quick match. goes about 10 minutes. It's it's yeah. a Dudley's table match. You kind of know how it's going to end. Well, and and when when you see the two teams, of Hardcore mm-hmm. Holly and Perry Saturn, and then you see the actual team of the Dudley Boys, you know who's winning. Yeah. <laughs> it's not hard to yeah. figure out. And it's not even a knock on Holly or Saturn. No, no, no. They're not a tag team. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Dudley's win that. And about 10 minutes, Dudley Duck dropped to the table on Holly. Sure. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Then uh, you got the big build up, the big anticipation. Uh, who's the announcer at this time? The ring announcer? Yeah. William Garcia. Dang, really? In 2002? Man, she was there for a while then. Yeah, she she was awesome. Prolific. Man. Love love big fan of Lillian, so that works for me. Yeah. Well, Lillian announces, it is now time for your AEW backlash main event. Crowd goes wild. Christian! And, yep. Christian! Now, here's what's funny. So at this time, yes, Christian's been kind of acting like a valiant baby face, but all throughout this month, he's technically still been kind of booed by the crowd. Yes, he's still a heel. Well, it's the same. It's the same basic concept with Triple H, yeah. who's technically not done anything he'll like, but has been acting more and more nefarious. Yes, he's done one babyface thing since he's been back, which is on your SmackDown. Yes, so and even then it was it, he just won a he, match, and even then he was babyface adjacent. <laughs> exactly, I like and it. And actually. Even in that match, how it ended, because Hogan could have just got the win, but he begged for the yeah, match. Yeah, it's like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I'm, I'm the, the champion. <laughs> I'm the champion. I got to get it. So, I love at it. least in these entrances, right, Christian comes out as a heel, and Triple H comes out as the valiant baby face who all the crowd loves. Yep. And it is wild. Like, the, the energy is top notch. Aaron tells him, you better take this kid seriously or else you're going to be in trouble. And Hunter's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Tag team specialist Ta- right there. Tag team Arn specialist Anderson. Arn Anderson talking about tag team specialist Christian. No problem. Oh, my goodness. And these two proceed to have a 25-minute banger. And 
So the extra special thing, like, if if they allow Arn to cut the promo tonight, and we can even save it till tomorrow if need be. Yeah. But if you allow Arn to cut a promo, putting over Christian, he can say, this man comes from Canada, yeah. the home of Bret Hart. Mm. Like, we may not agree with Lance Storm, but that guy's a, a world-class athlete. Yeah. Edge. Our our most recent Intercontinental Champion. You mm-hmm. cannot and brother. Yeah, you cannot brother. you cannot discount him. Yeah, you can't you cannot call him a scrub because yes. he's not a scrub. He wouldn't be here in this position if he. Oh my god! I don't. I don't. Kurt Angle to get to this. Position. I don't know, but my suspicion is Triple H is retaining tonight. Yes. So if if Christian tomorrow gets told by Arn Anderson, you know, continue to believe in yourself, kid. You come from the land of. Oh, okay. Oh, continue. Yeah. yeah. Let me let me finish the yes. show, and yes. then we'll we'll talk about the future. Yes. All right. Because you're you're still up next after anyway. Yeah. Exactly. We're all like next. Immediately. <laughs> um. So yes, like I said, back and forth. The way this match starts, the first probably five six minutes, are Triple H just dominating, and very similar to Kurt Angle, pie facing Christian, kicking him while he's down, throwing him out of the ring because he doesn't like, even like a baby face would do. Yeah, like a, like like classic baby face would do. And Triple H is soaking up this, at the time, adulation from the crowd. He goes, they're loving it. And then that's when, and then Christian starts fighting back. He's, he's, he's pushing through. He's, he's finding his moments. He's hitting roll-ups. He's, he's nailing his uh, reverse tornado DDT. He's uh, catching Triple H off guard with a drop toe hold here or there. And Triple H is starting to get mad. He's starting to get pissed off. He's, he can't believe that this, this kid's hanging with him. Do you know what this is reminding me of? What? Triple H versus Shelton Benjamin. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm glad you picked up on that. That's that great. So good. But um, Triple H decides he, he, he's done effing around. Nails Christian with a spine buster. Covers him. Christian kicks out at one. Crowd, crowd can't believe You are a big fan of that spot. It's a good spot. It is because, a good spot. I'm not going to do it all the time. But, but, just, but you did it in the beginning and the end. So mm-hmm. it, keep, it, yeah, it, it, it keeps it's a synergy. bookmark. Yeah. It keeps it's a, synergy. Uh, uh, not bookmark. It's a bookend. Yeah, Bookended. Exactly. Like yeah, it. but it, and, and it's not like he kicked out of the pedigree at one. He kicked right. out of spine buster. Exactly. So, but it's still Triple H's second biggest move. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to be like, I, what? Yes. And this is when the crowd starts getting behind Christian a little bit. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. The kid's, the kid's going to do it. So Triple H is like, okay, we're done here. I'm finished. I'm wrapping this up. And he and he's, kicks him in the gut. Links up for the pedigree. Christian does a classic reversal where you you know you lift mm-hmm. out the bridge, of it, yep, yep, and hits the bridge. Gets a nice, nice near fall, a nice two point nine nine nine. I love Triple it. H kicks out. And then Triple H hits the high knee, and the back and forth is insane. Crowd's going wild. Say so Triple H picks up Christian, goes for a scoop slam. Christian shaking, wiggling, gets out. Links one arm, links the second, turns. Kill switch! Because I'm not calling it the unprettier. Ever. For sure, for sure. So it's immediately kill switch. Yes. Rolls him over. Covers Triple H. One, two, foot on the ropes, but the ref hits the three. The crowd loses their mind because they think it's a title change. But then referee, probably Earl Hebner. Sure. Because he's the only person I've ever seen that always miss this. It's like, no, 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 no pin, no pin. Don't ring the bell, don't ring the bell. Foot but the music's rope, already playing. Ropes. Yep. The music's already playing. Christian yeah. thinks he has it. Yep, and, and at that moment, the people realize, oh, my God, I want Christian to win. Oh, my God, Christian's great. The crowd's losing their mind. Triple H gets up slowly. Um, Christian goes for another unprettier. And Triple H gets his arms out, pushes Christian into Earl. Yep, I knew that was yep. I knew it was coming. Yep, nails a low blow. Turns over around, hits the pedigree, pedigree. Yep. Pretend I can speak. And then it's Earl. Been a long show. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long show. Earl, Earl um, wakes up just enough, counts a little lethargic. One, two, three. Solidifying Triple H's wow. hero turn. And solidifying Christian's baby face turn. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I so, love it so much. Backlash closes, Triple H getting booed. And thinking he is God's gift to humanity. Christian rolling out of the ring on the floor, but getting the love and adulation from the crowd that I think he should have had his whole career. And uh, this is pro- what probably the first double turn since Austin and Brett. It's the only thing that comes to my mind. Yeah, oh, so. It's so good. It is so freaking good. Dude, I don't know what you got for the next night's Raw, but I've already got multiple things envisioned, right? <laughs> so, like I said, 
uh, Christian should start the show. Christian yep. should start uh, the show. And here's what how I would do it. So Christian, like I said, nice new haircut. He comes down. His music is playing, but he's not doing the the gold falling from the yeah. ceiling. He's not doing the not spin. doing the like, yeah none of that because he didn't win the title. So he comes out and he he goes to speak, but instead of speaking. The crowd, just like with the Hardys and Edge and Christian, won't stop clapping for yeah. him. They're all standing. They're all like, we love you, Christian. And before he can speak, that's when Arn Anderson, he doesn't come out through the stage. He comes from the side of the stage and gets in the ring. He says, he says, son, let me let me get that. And so Christian hands him the mic. He says, uh, I can see it in your face. And, and Arn's great at being serious. Oh, yeah, I can see it in your that. face. Uh, you're, you're struggling. He's like, but you come from... You come from a place with with tremendous talent, whether it's uh, the company's first undisputed champion, Chris Jericho. You know, the best there is, the best there was, the best there will be, Brett the Hitman Hart. Uh, you know, each time the crowd pops, God, I wish this was in Canada. I don't know where the show's happening, but yeah. we'll pretend. Yeah, let's, let's, let's wish it was in <laughs> let's Canada. Let's wish it was Canada. We haven't checked, but like, yeah. wherever the show happened, mm-hmm. they're loving this. So you put over Chris Jericho, you put over Bret Hart, uh, he... he are being a, a, a great wrestler himself can put over Lance Storm. Yep. And he says, he says, uh, many a, a wrestler have said that that your brother Edge, he he's one of the next top guys, but he's not the only next top guy in this company. And and so as Arn is helping Christian believe in himself, right? So he yeah. he goes from being down. To up more up yeah. right, I would love for him to be assaulted by Brock Lesnar immediately. I don't know what you've got Brock doing, and I don't know if you're cool with this, but I would love for Brock to immediately take him out because mm-hmm. so we established that Christian the night before is a top babyface, right? Yeah. But we established that Brock Lesnar is a murder machine the night before. Yep. Yeah. And so we went from Brock opening to now and Christian closing to both these guys being top guys. I would love for Brock Lesnar to jump. Christian, and for Paul to take the mic from Arn and say, this, this is your next top guy. This is the next big thing. This is the world's most dangerous man, or wrestling's most dangerous man. There you go. Um, and so I would then do the Brock Lock to, to Christian, Christian mm-hmm. if that's okay by you. Honestly, this, I'm fine with that. Okay, that, thank that's you. That's actually great. Thank you. Um, and so that I just thought that would be a great opening segment. Yeah. Um. So, I'm not Actually, sure. What, not mad at that. I'm not sure what match you have booked, uh, for this show. But I know a segment I would love to have. Okay. Which is so obviously Christian needs help to the back by the referees yeah. and the security. Yeah, he can't walk. But Arn didn't get touched. Yeah. Because obviously he's Arn Anderson. Yeah. yeah right. Um. So I would have Arn go speak to his lifelong best friend, Ric Flair, his cousin, woo, and say, say, Rick. Uh, you've been spending a lot of time with Hunter, and, and Rick's like, woo, yeah, you know. Nature Jeff, boy. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff flying, limousine, limousine ride. Ride. Yeah, Style just uh, exactly, all of it. And Alligator so, shoes. <laughs> yeah, Rolexes. Rolexes. Exactly. And so, so Arn is serious, but Rick ain't taking nothing seriously. And so then that's, Arn, Arn's like, Hunter, he's got great talent. And, and Rick's like, yeah, let's go out on town with Hunter. And so he grabs, he puts his arm around Arn, and they walk out, and they go find Hunter, right? Yeah. Um, so this is leading to, don't get me wrong, Flair is still the president, yeah. Hunter is still the champion, but this is leading to Arn, who is the, the level-headed man, going to the commissioner, Mick Foley, yeah. probably not on this night, but in the future, and being like, we've got to figure out what to do, because like, this yeah. guy is like, they're, off they're, the they're, lunch They're, they're kind of effing around, <laughs> yes, need, exactly. we need to focus up, this is the new company, damn it. <laughs> exactly. Ah, uh, we gotta invo- enforce some uh, enforce some stability around enforce here. Some stability, exactly. <laughs> oh oh man, um, yeah, that's all, that's actually all great stuff. Thank you. I uh, was basically gonna have Christian just cut a classic baby face for him, but I really like that. Like Christian doesn't say because he can thing. still do it next week. Yeah, or the he, week after. he can do it. He, he doesn't even have to do it. Actually, the way you did it made it so he doesn't have to say a damn thing. And he still gets put over huge. He gets put over by a legend in Arn Anderson. Mm-hmm. The crowd puts him over, yep. which is the most important thing. Absolutely. So, and meanwhile, Christian hasn't said a word since the first week. Mm-hmm. Like, he hasn't had to speak. Right, because his actions are speaking for him. Exactly. Which, 
I mean, I'm not saying Christian can't talk because he no, because he's a good he definitely promo. can. But I I think the fact that he doesn't have to I says think, a lot. I think the not talking is helping to to wipe away the the crybaby yeah. attitude that he had. Exactly, he's now all action, no faction. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better run. <laughs> That's good. That's good though. Um, so after all of that insanity, um, we we go uh, to uh, just a quick match. It's a uh, what did I have? Oh, it was a uh, DDP uh, just uh, beating Billy Gunn. Oh, okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, nice little match. Billy comes oh out with meat. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yeah. I have, I've, I've, I've got to ask you. Yeah. Do you have plans for Diamond Dallas Page? Actually, as of right now, no. I know exactly what I want him to do. What's up? I want him to be the motivational speaker that bolsters Sean Stasiak and Billy Gunn. And, and hypes them up. I want him to be their hype man, right? So okay. he's already got the never-ending smile. Yeah. He's got that awesome jacket. Yep. And these two guys have nothing going for them, right? Nothing. Not a thing. Nothing. In fact, after he beats him, he's like, damn, you guys, you guys had it rough, huh? Yeah. Like, yeah. Come with me. Come with yeah, me. Yeah, come with me. And and it's a it's a way to, just like with Arn, it's a way to help. Now, don't get me wrong. Billy's got a long career behind him, but Stasiak doesn't. Um, yeah. He's he's really young in the business, maybe three to four. Three or four years. Damn, seriously? Yeah, yeah. He Well, so... Yeah, I, I he keep forgetting this is 22 years exactly. ago. Yeah, so, so he debuted in 99. So yeah. 99, 2000, 2001, 2002. Yeah, four years. He's four years into his career. Jesus. And so, but the point is, DEP, he's, he's been in the business, and the best part is, he started as a manager. Yeah. And Billy and Sean Stasiak, are, neither one of them are small. No. And so it's not like the olden days where DDP is going to dwarf everybody he's around. I'm about to say, yeah. And I, I genuinely, Billy Gunn's so big, I forget how big he is. I know. Like, he's standing next to the Acclaim right now, and I'm like, God damn, the Acclaim looks tiny next to Billy it's Gunn. It's crazy. And they're, neither one of them are tiny. No, at so, all. They're both huge men. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I think that would be a great use of his... You know what? I, I mess with it. Uh, I think it's a good good trio to have. Because I was going to pretty much build these two up, especially since I don't have an opinion on Stasiak. Right. So, but I do like Billy Gunn, so I was like, i got to do something. With sure. It. So, that's, that's actually good stuff. I was trying to figure out how to get to an A to B, so thanks. No, my pleasure. Saves time, saves time. Um, next up, we have a segment um, that is just a contract signing between Jazz and Lita. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty much how every contract signing in the history of time has gone. They, they say some words. Jazz is keeping in character, very respectful, but says, I am the most dominant women's wrestler here. And despite the fact that you won a great match against Triss, Next week when we have our world title match will be no different. Mm-hmm. And I want Trish to be healed so badly because of Jazz being such a consummate professional babyface yeah. in this storyline. I don't know if she will turn, but like the yeah. more that Jazz is being respectful, the more I want Trish to be disrespectful. Yeah, because I, I just I, need that I, yin I, to I, that yang thing. You yeah, know? no, it'll there'll be a yin to the yang. I haven't decided who I want to take. It's all good. That's why I haven't. No, that's fine. Established like a super heel. Right now, I need to establish the vision as existing. Absolutely. So, I am mad at what everything everything you've done has been good. Yeah. The the Molly match, the Molly well, the two more Molly matches, yeah. then the Trish and Lita, uh Ivory and Jazz. Everything's been good. I just the more you talk, the more I'm like, I want Trish to be a heel. Yeah. I want Trish to be a heel. To be fair, she's a phenomenal heel, so I understand why you, why you feel that way. Um well I mean Jazz is a great heel in and of her own right. Yeah. But because you're having her be Super baby. Thing. Yes, um, it's the only reason I'm I'm wanting it to to be bestowed upon you. Yeah, some Trish. some type of contrast. I get you. I'll plan it out more. And, oh yeah, it's all good. But as of right now, I uh, just establishing the women's division to get them from A to B, get them from nothing to anything. Yes. Um. But yeah, it it it, it ends with Lita like that's cute. That's what's up. And then she slaps her in the face after signing the contract. I like it. Yep. And it's like, don't disrespect me. I'm not somebody to be looked over. Yes. I'm effing Lita. I went to I went to Mexico to learn to wrestle. Didn't even know how to speak Spanish, but I I went down there because I looked up to Rey Mysterio, and I knew that if I wanted to succeed in wrestling, I was gonna go where he was trained. There you go. Which is a true story. Have you ever heard, have you ever yeah. heard a life story? Yeah, it's good it's stuff. Incredible. Good stuff. Made, makes me feel real sad that it's all devolved down to Edge. <laughs> I know, right? Which is like, damn. That's like, dang it. So, I, don't get me wrong, that was a bad life choice on her part. Sure, but, but, but uh, so, at just a peek behind the curtain. When we were planning this show, I went to Josiah and I said, there's one person you drafted to your show I'm going to have to steal. And he said, who's that? And I said, Lita. Uh, and he's like, 
why Lita? I'm like, well, when we get to that time where Edge and uh, Lita link up, I've got to have her because I already have Matt and Edge on my roster. Exactly. And so I was like, I'm willing to trade you. I'm willing to do whatever, but like, I got to get her so I can run the storyline. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Um, and then uh, lastly, um, no, sorry, not lastly. Uh, Van Dam talks about uh, his match with Raven. How mm-hmm. it was one of the toughest matches of his life. That was just a little backstage segment. For sure. And he said he's uh, looking forward to the future of being U.S. champion just to get the U.S. champion on the show. Absolutely. Um, and then Probably we have... Coach action there. Exactly. And then we have the uh, last match of the night. So, uh, the hardcore title, which wasn't represented on the show as the main event. Okay. Uh, represented on the pay-per-view. I mean, I, I didn't mean. Was the main event of tonight's show. Uh, so, I have my man Gold Dust going one-on-one with Kane. It's the toughest hardcore match he's had this whole time. You said Kane? Yeah, Kane. Okay. Right, the big red machine. Just yeah. checking. Former WWE champion. Yes. Yeah, that, that Kane. Actually, was he world champion in your world? Well, it happened before I booked it. Oh, okay. So cool, cool, he cool. still had that 24-hour reign. All right, great, great stuff. So nothing changes prior to the invasion in the, the World Wrestling Federation. I couldn't re- I'm not going to lie. I couldn't remember when he won the world title. Yeah, it was uh, in 98. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plenty of time. Yeah. All right, cool. Um... But yeah, so he wrestles Kane. It was a great back and forth match. Um, Kane goes for a choke slam through the table, but uh, Goldust sneaks out and uh, hits a bulldog through the table. Hardcore falls count anywhere. So Goldust pinned Kane in that situation. Kane doesn't look weak despite losing. Um, but it was a big win for Goldust. Really adds some importance to the hardcore title. And after the match is over, Goldust is celebrating in the ring and Stacey Keebler walks out. Huh? Okay. Give me, give me some time. Okay. All right. So Stacy walks up, gets in the ring. Goldust is had uh, the reaction you just had, and then uh, she um, what's the word I want to think here? Shatters his dreams. Okay, I'm listening. I'm with. I'm with it. He kicks him. She kicks him in the balls. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And and Goldust is holding his nuts as as you do after you get kicked in the balls. Of course. And that is when Colt Kurt Angle's music hits. So yes. Kurt comes out and says, you have been talking ish about me for four weeks. Yeah, four weeks at this point. Mm-hmm. You've been cracking jokes. You've been making fun of me and disrespecting me. I am still the number one overall pick of Alpha Entertainment World Ride. I am still the star, star of this show. Man, I cannot talk. And it's almost over, I promise. Yes. Good Lord. We're going to get it to the finish line. Yeah, we're, we're about to cross. And... And, and Kurt says, you know what? I, I'll i admit, I've had it rough these past four weeks. I, I haven't been winning the matches I should have won. But I'll tell you what, I'll be damned if I'm not a champion by the end of uh, whenever our next pay-per-view is. So, oh, you're doing it on pay-per-view? Yeah. Okay, because uh, yeah, it's well, been, the, next it's pay-per-view, the next pay-per-view is my pay-per-view. Shit, that's right. So what I would recommend, okay. let, let, me, let me tag in real quick. Four weeks, Kurt Angle has fallen. Yep. But you know what? Gold Dust, you're down there. Your dreams have been shattered. I don't want to wrestle Gold Dust. <laughs> you went to war with Kane, and your war paint came off. So I'm challenging the natural Dustin Rhodes for that hardcore title. It's got Texas right on it. I, I've seen your design. I see what you put on there. Yep. Well, why don't you represent your family, the Rhodes family, when you defend that hardcore title against the best damn wrestler on the planet, the number one draft pick of Monday Night Raw, the wrestling machine, Kurt Angle. Good stuff. Thanks. And uh, because when you said it was a grueling match, I was I just imagined his paint yeah, coming off. Coming off like it does every single time. Of course, yeah. Match. But yeah, thanks. Uh, as you can see, I was draining. Uh, I put Stacy with Kurt because let, let's be honest, she's I'm, not a good wrestler. She's not a good wrestler. So she's she great to see, but she's great to look at. Absolutely, Kurt, Kurt's a dirty, downright, downrotten heel. Mm-hmm. He, he's been down and out. He he needs something to turn his fortune around. Yeah, bring having, that confidence. Having yep. a drop dead gorgeous manager in Stacy Keebler definitely helps with your confidence. Doesn't matter who you are, and she can help negotiate and manipulate Mick Foley, Ric Flair. Um, Probably not Arn, but, you know, whatever. Arn can be the straight man when Rick's getting manipulated. Exactly. And so, uh, no, but, I, I love it. I yeah. think that's a great finish. But, yeah, that's um, why I, that's why I put those two together, because I'm like, Stacy and Kurt, 
Mm. Can I make that work? And I'm like, yeah, I can totally work. Well, and work. I I know you didn't tell us what she was wearing, but I instantly thought of Miss Hancock. Yeah, it's, the the business suit, yeah, the, the glasses. Suit. Yeah. Um, it's just it's the per, the the professional look to have for um God, I've always Please let me do this. Please let me do this. I've always, always, always wanted uh, Alexandria York's gimmick of the York Foundation to come back in the modern age. Do you remember Alexandria York's gimmick in WCW? No, Do you know who Alexandria York was? Yeah. Okay, Terry Reynolds in WCW. She would have the the mo- the biggest, most fat laptop that you could ever imagine existing. That I don't know how she carried it out because she's so freaking small. But in the 2002, you can have all these bright, colorful. It can every laptop she brings out can match the the business the suit thing. she's wearing. Yeah, it's exactly. options. <laughs> it's the options and uh, things are pretty. I mean, 2002 might have been the peak of like uh, appearance when it came to uh, to technology. Like with the like I said, those, those pretty colors and yeah. the, the fun times. So I would love for Stacy Keebler. Mm. Um, to 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 have the computer out there to help the wrestling machine figure out the best strategy. The best strategy in his matches. Yep, works for me. <sighs> Actually, I'm not mad. At like obviously that won't debut in this segment, but next yeah. week. Yeah, just in the future. In the future. next match, brother. That was a great. That was a great uh, a follow up to your pay per view. Appreciate it. Uh, I love it so much. Whew. So <laughs> you keep making me feel inadequate. <laughs> But I'm gonna do my best. You got it to yeah. uh, to to follow that that magnificent show up because tonight is April the 18th of 2002, which is three days shy of William Regal hitting his 30 day mark, and if he doesn't defend his Intercontinental Championship because he won it on the 21st. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You're right. So if he doesn't defend tonight then he will be stripped in three days of the Intercontinental Championship. So Stephanie McMahon, who last week, or no, week before last, had a fatal four-way to, 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 to determine William Regal's opponent. Uh, tonight, in the main event, she has William Regal defend his title against Jeff Hardy. And so the match is everything you can not only imagine, but remember from all the times that Jeff Hardy and William Regal have stepped in the ring together because these guys aren't strangers to one another. Not at all. They were together Fair during the Attitude Era, the Ruthless Aggression Era, um, all kinds of uh, 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 great matches for uh, each uh, with each other, I mean. Right. And so the, the fact is that in this match, um, William Regal... Uses his brass knuckles to knock out Jeff Hardy. However, Lil Nate, uh, Charles Robinson, Whoa. is not a dumb referee, and he sees William Regal use the brass knuckles, <laughs> and so he disqualifies William Regal. <laughs> but William Regal don't care because he he retains the title. <laughs> um, and so that is the opening contest. Cool, cool. Um, and because you don't want to send the crowd home with that nasty taste in their mouth of yeah, the the champion cheating, in the main event of the show we have Booker T teaming up with the Big Show to take on the X Factor um, because it was set up last week. And um, I said I said I said I, I said a little bit of a lie. Oh, you lied to me? Uh, not you personally, but the idea of uh, sending the crowd home happy. So, <laughs> so Booker is he he is a babyface, right? Throughout all the invasion, he was a heel. But through, uh, ever since his return, when he defeated Test, he is a babyface. Yeah, yeah. The only problem is he's a babyface who. He's a big fan of himself. He's a showboat, you know. He does the spin rooney. He uh, he's a, he's he's playing to the crowd. He's a he's a big he's a he's a bit, a little bit of a goofball, if you will. Good good terminology. And so uh, as the match progresses, Big Show never gets tagged in. And so this got it. Turn of events leads to a different turn of events, being uh, Big Show turning on his partner, Booker T. I can't believe it. <laughs> I know, right? Shocking. <laughs> so um, so Booker has has overcome, uh, every time Justin Crumbles in the ring, he, he he takes him down. Every time Justin tags out to Xbox, Booker 
is is overpowering. But anytime that Albert is in the ring, uh, Booker is struggling. Um, but every time Booker works towards his corner, Albert brings him back, and then he tags in one of the, the smaller fellows, and Booker gets back on top. So show never gets tagged in. in so this two-on-three handicap match is really a one-on-three handicap match because um, finally, after 12 and a half minutes, Booker T is working towards the corner where Big Show is, and as he a big Big Show's reaching out, and and Booker goes to tag, Big Show moves his hand away, and Booker is crushed, uh, visually in his face. He's like, I "Can't believe he's seriously, done this. seriously, like, great." So he gets up, takes a Baldo bomb um, from Albert. One, two, three. Um, Albert. Um, it's a big victory because you know X Factor's been taking taking them taking them L's recently, but uh, Albert finally brings in the uh, brings the W to the camp. Um, as Big Show is walking away, X Pac grabs the mic and he says, "He says show show." And so Big Show turns around. He's like, "Get down here! You never even tagged into this ring." He's like, "What what do you think you're doing? Come on, come on, get get down here!" And so Show steps over the top rope, gets in the ring. And he says, come on, bring it in. And they hug, right? And so uh, and so, Big Show is in the here with Albert, with X-Pac over here, and Credible, and they all four raise hands, and they're smiling, and they're happy. Because um, uh, at the climax of this show, X-Factor grows by one, and uh, that one that they grow by is freaking humongous, that being the Big Show. Big old one. And so, uh, um, as a dot-com exclusive... Ah, uh, bringing those back. Just because I, I really want to establish now, before you even get to 425 of 2002, I want to establish that with the addition of Big Show to X Factor, X Pac, uh, Albert, and Justin Creble have all agreed that the group has been rebranded to XL Factor. They're the ex- extra large factor. They're uh, they're bigger, they're badder than ever. And double, so, double XL Factor. Exactly. And so uh, let's get your... Is it your final roll? Oh, give me uh, a second. I'm about to say, when's your show? Is well, this my, final roll? Or do so I have... So, I have, I have, uh, so mine's 425, so yours is going to be 423. Uh, and so after my SmackDown, we'll be on the next episode. So you have a final Raw, and then I have a final SmackDown, and we'll be done with this first episode of Alpha Entertainment Worldwide. Um, but before we get to our final episodes of Raw and SmackDown, we've been here for a long time. I've got to do some shilling. I haven't shilled yet. So Yeah, the three hours we've been doing. I know. So um, if you're still here, if you're enjoying uh, our booking of Alpha Entertainment Worldwide, you will love... My 68-page graphic novel, Everlasting Survivors, all, Volume 1, all day long. This is the Jeff Hicks cover. There were only ever 100 of these printed. This is the Nick Crook cover. There were only ever 50 of these printed. Uh, there are, oh my goodness, not very many of these left. Not very many of these left, but there is a link in the description for so you can get your first printing of Everlasting Survivors, Volume 1, all day long. And uh, so, now that the shilling's out of the way... Whew. Josiah has one final Raw of this episode. I have one final SmackDown. And after that, well, you'll get your fill of AEW for the month. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been so good. I'm loving this so much. Kurt has been put over. Dustin Rhodes is back. I mean, Goldust is being treated right. Rob yeah. Van Dam. Yep. Christian. Brock Lesnar. Steve Austin. Oh, so much good stuff. So much William fun. Regal. All the main events. Mr. Perfect being you strong. Eddie Guerrero back. Whew. Whew. This has been a lot. This, is, this has definitely been a lot. Yes. Um. Okay. So, we start off the show. Uh, Brock just came out. Uh, Paul's pretty much just hyping him up. He's talking down to Christian uh, as of last week and announces that in two weeks' time when Christian's knee heals, uh, he'll be having the, the great pleasure of being crushed by the most dangerous man, the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. That is, you, you of course, his came so I'll say a lot more, but that's Absolutely. long and short of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then next up, we have Van Damme coming out. 
So keep in mind uh, what what I just said. Two weeks. Um, in two weeks, the uh, the uh, gold du- or Dustin versus uh, Angle. Angle match will happen as well, and um, and Van Dam is also coming to announce that he is going to be wrestling Chris Jericho on that show as well. So it's going to be a pay per view level Raw. Absolutely, mindset. I love it. Yep. Um, and uh, Rob explains Jericho has earned this opportunity based on beating Kurt Angle, mm-hmm. and at the uh, Backlash pay per view, Jericho. Well, and he was the most recent undisputed champion exactly. before Triple H, so before Mister Hunter Hearst humbly arrived, exactly. Yes. Yep. So Jericho, not so humbly, accepts mm-hmm. calls, calls him a what was his what was his go to insult back then? Well, one of them was uh, uh, crap. Yeah. I was about to say slap nuts, but that's Jericho. That's, that's, that's Jared. Jared. Yeah. Uh, ass clown. No, that's what it, something like that. I think it's ass clown. Um, but, but honestly, I, if I was Jericho, I'd call Rob Van Dam a flash in the pan. He's Ooh. like, you've only been here, you know, you got, you, yeah, you got heated up on that, uh, on your arrival, yeah. but you're just a flash in the pan. Yeah. Me, I'm the first undisputed champion. I main I'm a, evented. I'm a future undisputed champion. Exactly. I main evented pay-per-views with Bill Goldberg, you know, just sprinkling those little teasers up. Exactly. Um, because I'm pretty sure I booked that. It might not have been. It wasn't the main of main. No, it was the main event. I can't remember now if it was the semi main <laughs> or the main. But in my world, Jericho actually wrestled. It was the main event because it was the unification of the the classic WCW title with the big gold belt. That's right. And it Bill is, Bill yeah. held both those. But so yeah. anyway, my point is Jericho puts himself over as not being a flash in the pan, as being a long standing top guy. Established top guy. Established exactly. Whereas Rob Van Dam couldn't even main event to Bingo Hall when he was with ECW. So yeah, things like that. God damn, could even made a bit of bingo card. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, he did actually made a bit of, but you know, he was never the top champion. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so that's that promo. Um, there's a couple matches on here, but uh, uh, the only only ones you need to pay attention to. Uh, Kane beats Boss Man. Cool. Uh, to get a win and get Boss Man on the show, I like Boss Man. Absolutely, so, Ray Trailer. Yeah, Big Ray. Um, and then Kevin Nash and Scott Hall come out and talk about how life life's been tough for him. You know they've been they've been working hard. Hall's going through his demons at, at this time, and he wants to he wants to try and turn everything around with his best friend in the world, Kevin Nash, by by becoming the tag team champion. You're so, gonna regret this paper uh, pay per view. You're gonna regret this promo because at the next pay per view is when. Uh, Kurt Henning and Scott Hall get fired because of the plane ride from hell. I, I know. I like, just, just, to, just, just, to, just, just, just let me finish. Oh, you're good. You're good. I'm not mad at you. I just, I mean, it's very real life to do it this yeah, way. Exactly. That's the point. But um, so the um, so they challenge the Dudley Boys, mm. and they 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 want the tag team titles more than anything else. But the Dudleys come out and very rightly say, "We've already beat you." Yep. I have no reason. Beach at Mania and Backlash. And Backlash. Well, Mania. no, no. Uh, on TV and Never. on pay-per-view. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there you yeah, go. You're yeah. right. Yeah, we've beaten you at the grandest stage of them all, and then we beat you on the biggest first show in the history of time. Yes. And um, they say, you know what? You make, you make a great point, but let's be honest. Pat, me, and, me and Nash, we're world champions. We're top-tier talent. Beating us at, at the highest level, what you've done is impressive. I'll tell you what, there's something bigger than beating us, and that's taking our careers. Oh, 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 oh. oh you're so smart. Thank oh, you're so smart. That was a good, that's a good call. Because, yeah, Nash should put over the fact that him and Scott have both been world champions exactly. in this world, yep. in this booking. I like, oh. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sorry, that was good. Thank you. How dare I ever I, question you? Listen, you just had to give me time to get it through. Now, I know I've been off in the last hour of this show, <laughs> but, but I know what I'm doing. Dude. Yes. So they challenged them. For a titles versus careers match for next week. And just to make sure there's no underhanded tactics because the, the Dudleys are technically hills. They say, we're going to make this an anything goes match. Cool. So, so as you can put whatever all-time no disqualification, no old bar, stipulation of that nature. Um, that'll be next week, titles versus careers. Um, and then I uh, lost my whole train of thought for the ending. Oh. My main event, duh, my women's match. Uh, Jazz versus Lita. Uh, two have a banger. Uh, goes about 20 minutes. 
Uh, Jazz ends with the triple power bomb. Crowd goes wild. Um, shows respect to Lita. Reaches out her hand. Lita slaps it away. Oh, okay. Says, no, I don't want your damn respect. I want the damn title. Yeah. And that is probably the first instance where Jazz has not gotten the respectful handshake, has not gotten the hand raised. You've been catching the pattern. Yeah. And Lita is heated. She wants that woman's championship. She wants to be the one to make some prestigious. But for now, Jazz is still the champion, still dominant. And she raises the title in victory. Once again, an image that, as she says, everyone's going to have to get used to. I love it. So, my SmackDown, the last SmackDown of this episode, is a tale of two divisions. Division one Ooh. is the Cruiserweight division, which will open this show, that being Funaki challenging Hurricane Helms for the Cruiserweight Championship. Nice, nice. Um, Hurricane retains, Cool. but uh, post-match... Uh, Hurricane says that his friend, uh, now this isn't via Mike, this is just like, uh, he helps up Funaki, puts his arm around him, he says, uh, so the camera's now tight on him, he says, my friend uh, Gregory Helms, he wants to uh, he wants to step away from SmackDown, he wants you to be SmackDown's number one announcer. Ooh. And so uh, and so, so Funaki is now smiling, he raises each, they raise each other's hands, because yeah. So Funaki gets what he wanted, which is to be recognized as SmackDown's number one announcer, mm-hmm. and I'm going to gift to you, if you will have him, Gregory Helms as a backstage interviewer. Love to have him. Uh, wonderful. Glad, that, glad we could have that. And then we close the show with um, one-on-one action, Booker T versus The Big Show. Now, I say one-on-one, but in reality, uh, Big Show's in his corner, and on this... On this side of the, the, the ring apron, we have Albert. On this side of the ring apron, we have X-Pac and uh, bah- uh, working his way over behind Booker T is just incredible. And so Booker, once again, is basically four on one. That he's not used to. Exactly. So uh, as the, the match goes on, um, X-Pac will trip Booker and, and Justin will uh, distract the referee while uh, Albert hits him. Uh, but... Uh, after a certain amount of time, we we hear familiar music of "If You Smell," and so Rock, his music hits. He comes out, and uh, X Pac walks to him. Boom, hits him. Big bump on the ramp. Incredible comes at him. Uh, Rocky catches him. Boom, uh, 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 rock bottom. And then Albert uh, gra- uh, goozles uh, Rocky. Baldo bomb on the the stage. But all three of the guys are away from ringside. Yep. And then that's when Booker can kick. Show in the gut, he goes up to the top, and I want him to. I don't know if he can do it, but I want him to hit the Harlem Hangover where he does the, uh, the Houston Hangover with the front flip, leg the, drop. Front, the front flip leg drop um, off the top. To I, I assume he can still do it. It's 21 years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would love for um, God, rough on the cots and stuff. Oh, <laughs> exactly. And so I would love for Booker to go over in the main event, uh, one, two, three over Big Show. Uh, as the X Factor head toward the ring, Rocky comes and they clear house. And uh, yeah, we just close out with a happy moment of uh, X Factor losing once again, but you know, whatever. The baby faces are going over and everybody's happy. Cool. Crowd wise. Um, brother, this was the most fun. Lord. It was it was long. It, it was, was definitely the longest we've ever yeah, done. Yeah, one hundred percent the longest. But mm. it was important because we're we're establishing so many new dynamics, so many new elements to the show. Yep. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great. It was good stuff. Though. Yes, good and stuff. I, 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 for, I foresee this actually being the longest show because before when we were doing the Wednesday Night Wrestling Remix, you would just run through the facts and I would give you the fiction. But now that we're both doing world building, exactly, it takes more time. Yeah, it definitely takes more time, man. And it, honestly, I feel like it's more fun. Yeah, no, I, I'm having a ball booking these shows, but it, it gets rough to talk after about two hours. Yes. Of just, um, so the upside is, from no other episode of this show will c- cover two months worth of content. So the problem with this, not problem, but the reason this show was so long is because we had to finish out the month of March and then get hit all of the month month of April. Yep. And there was a pay-per-view in between, so I gave you an extra show. But next week, or not next week, next episode of this, which will happen in February, will we'll only... Be back to the month format. Yeah, the month format where you'll have four episodes, I'll have four episodes, plus I'll have one pay-per-view. And so, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. And come back in February when we see what's going on 
uh, in the world of Alpha Entertainment worldwide. Appreciate you guys.